Welcome to the Interesting Podcast, episode number 93. This episode is our first Kiwi. It is Luke Hawker, who is just so funny and just the best hang. Dude, you guys are going to love him. He's so cool. He has the best accent, obviously. He's uh, he's from New Zealand, and it took me this, this podcast to realize, you know what? It is superior, at least to mine. Anyway, so we talk about how he was born in New Zealand, and then moving to Australia, and how he can't win at rugby, no matter what he does. He's caught right in the middle. Uh, it's, it's, it's pretty great. Uh, we talk about making movies with his brothers growing up, and maybe using the wrong kind of paint to paint each other. It is hilarious and great. Uh, we talk about how he got started into movies, how before that he took uh, gymnastics and then dance, and how that later came in handy, big time, for uh, pursuing performing arts. We talk about how his brother uh, worked at a little place called, I don't know, Weta Workshop, and how Luke's first movie he worked on was The Lord of the Rings. Guys, I know, I know, Lord of the Rings. He worked on Lord of the Rings, all three of them. He's got amazing stories, from making the prosthetics for Gimli to great stories with Lurts and how that all came to be. And, you know, I'm not going to keep it calm because, man, I love Lord of the Rings. Uh, So we talked about that. We talked about working with his heroes uh, when he when he got to do some work on Avatar, yep. And then Krampus, if you saw Krampus, super fun uh, Christmassy horror movie. It's great. He was Krampus. Yep, Luke Hawker was Krampus. I know, I know. We talked about working on Power Rangers, and then I Am Mother. If you haven't checked it out, I cannot recommend it enough. It is uh, it's on Netflix. It's great. Luke was Mother. He was the guy in the suit. He was also the supervisor who helped design and build the suit. Great stories. He's awesome. He is awesome. So I'm going to stop talking. Let's just get right into it, friends. This is the Interesting Podcast, episode number 93 with Luke Hawker. Theme song time. Yep. <laughs> Dude, it is not lost on me that we are able to talk from the other side of the planet. Yeah, that is pretty cool, man. It that is, is pretty, pretty cool. neat. I, cause most of my yep. guests are like either, they're usually in the States or like in London. So I was like, New mm. Zealand. So you're in tomorrow. So uh, how, how's the future? Yes, yeah, so I'm in the future. <laughs> yeah. It's awesome, man. Like the whole world, like everything's been sorted with all the politics and stuff. It's oh, all sorted. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Living in a utopian society and, and now we're your rulers. So you've got to start talking like us. You know what? Fair. Fair. I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> it seems like a fair trade. <laughs> I'm over here living in the past. Yeah. <laughs> Good with the times, man. I know. I'm trying my best here. <laughs> Dude, that is so... I. New Zealand has always been like the top of my list of places I need to travel to. And mm. uh, is is it as amazing as I think it is? Well, I mean, I'm slightly biased because I live here. That's fair. Um, but um, I have I have traveled uh, the world quite a bit and I, I I still yearn for it very quickly after I leave. And it's nice to go traveling. But whenever I come home, I just go, yeah, yeah. No, this, this is the place that I want to be. Um, it, it is... It is um, beautiful, uh, definitely a very, very beautiful country. It's breathtaking. But also I think the culture that we have in New Zealand is pretty awesome. And, and just, just just the way we like to live with each other with respect. I mean, obviously everyone has their problems, but New Zealand's problems uh, are not as um, – I don't. I don't feel there is. They have as much gravity as other places in the world. Sure. Um, and we, if if you're a nice person, usually um, people will be nice. You know, will welcome you, and that's kind of all you really need. You don't need to have any other attributes that need to be checked off or anything like. That. If you're a nice person and you're you're not um, trying to push down on anyone, people will welcome you. Um, and, and so yeah, the, the people and and our culture, I think, is pretty cool. Sure. So I'm moving to New Zealand. Yeah. This is an announcement. That I'm making right now. <laughs> <laughs> you should do it. You should do it. Totally. Dude, you, so you're from New Zealand, right? Uh, yeah, so I was born in New Zealand, uh, and I um, 
I grew up in, uh, well, basically born in Masterton, which is like uh, about an hour's north of uh, of Wellington, which is Wellington's the capital mm-hmm. uh, of New Zealand. So I was born in Masterton. My family are all from the Wairapa, which is the ma- area of where Masterton and other cities are. Oh, it's, actually, I don't think it's a city. Sometimes it's a city and sometimes it's a town. It depends on how many people are there. Yeah, um, <laughs> it fluctuates. <laughs> yeah. Um, but um, then when I was about five, uh, my my dad, uh, he wanted to be a TV film producer. Uh, and so so he moved to uh, to the Gold Coast, which is Brisbane uh, in Australia. And then our whole family, um, you know, got up and, and left in the mid-'80s uh, to go to Australia, and we lived in Australia, uh, in Queensland for about a year, uh, and then we moved to Sydney, uh, which is where I lived in Sydney, and I grew up in Sydney until I was um, 18. Nice. Uh, and then, yeah, and then moved back. So I'm I'm kind of, oh, it's it's hard. I, the, the best way to describe it, I don't know if you know about rugby. Rugby is a very, you know, a yeah, sport. very big sport, yeah, down down in New Zealand and Australia. Uh, and, and so I, I'm usually used as the punching bag. Uh, so if... <laughs> If if Australia is doing really well, everyone gives gives me crap for that. <laughs> says, oh yeah, Australia's uh, you, you lost, and I'm like, I'm not Australian. Um, <laughs> and then if if the Kiwis do well, you know, it, vice versa, they use it uh, whichever way you know best suits their their, yeah, their prerogative. Uh, I'm used, yeah. <laughs> but the funniest way to describe it, I was on the ski fields once in New Zealand, and uh, I was sitting next to this this kid on a long gondola, and I was just talking to this this kid on on the ski fields, and I was just sort of explaining to him. He says, "Oh, you've got an accent. Uh, you're from Australia." I'm like, "No, no, I'm I'm from New Zealand, but I just grew up there." And this look of utter confusion and 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 fear <laughs> on his face, he just looked at me and said, "So who do you go for in the rugby?" Of course, like with <laughs> of course petrified. How do you make this decision? <laughs> Uh, yeah, so, so yeah, but, um, yeah, so, uh, I, I, I count myself, I call myself an Antipodean, there you uh, go. which is, um, yeah, or a Pacific Islander because, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm from an island in the Pacific. Right, um, right. Yeah, yeah. I like it. I like it a lot. Mm. I always wonder mm. that, like, where people are from versus where they say they're from and born and, like, where you're raised makes a difference. It's like, I'm from North Carolina, but I've lived most of my life in Florida, but I'm still like, no, I'm, I'm not from here, even though I spent almost my whole life here. I'm from North Carolina. You know, yeah. it's like the the mentality. It's like, where does that come from? And you just lose both ways with rugby. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. And the thing is, for me, I feel, I feel at home in New Zealand. And I feel, whenever I go to the Wire Rapper, there's this sort of, uh, which is you know the area I'm from. Mm-hmm. Obviously, I don't, I don't want to live there because it's um, there's not a lot of film work there. Sure. Um, but um, but I uh, I do sort of a little bit of nostalgia comes home and a little bit of relaxing of yeah, I'm in in my place. Um, and I I grew up in Australia and was very much influenced by a lot of the concepts I think that, that, that Australia beholds and it's a beautiful country. Um, and you know, some really, really awesome people, but I definitely do feel like a New Zealander. Sure. There's less things that mm. want to kill you there. There are a lot less things <laughs> that want to kill you in New Zealand. Uh, humans, cars, um, earthquakes, that's about it. Whereas yeah. in Australia, Australia, anything with a pulse wants to kill you. Yeah, for real. Plants are like, all right, <laughs> yeah. you picked the wrong Without a town. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! I think that's pretty amazing that like all of the all of the death things from Australia didn't make it to New Zealand. So that's good. You don't have you know poisonous yeah. snakes in your toilets. So that's nice. No, no. I think um, I think that the journey it's a very it's a very difficult uh, swim. Yeah. Uh, good. For lots of things. I mean, a snakes. I'm pretty sure if they really tried, would be able to get there. But thankfully, they can't. And we, I mean, because we only have um, I think we've got one native mammal. Um, uh, in New Zealand, like uh, like like a little rat or something. The rest are all uh, birds, uh, okay. birds and insects. Yeah, so we've got Way like hundreds and hundreds of birds, native birds here. They're all all beautiful things. But yeah, we've got no known mammals that are you know a couple, um, and very little um, predators, which is why cats and dogs can sometimes be well, mostly cats can be a little bit frowned upon in New Zealand because they they do like to chew on the bird. Yeah, that's fair. Cats are yeah. just awful anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Not a cat person. <laughs> I saw this video yesterday, and it was like a cat being reunited with its owner after like three weeks away, and it just walks <laughs> by them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I I saw that video, yeah. and, and it, I've got I've got a cat, and uh, and can you attest? I, I, no, my cat's the exact opposite. Oh, you, you, you literally, got lucky. It, it it is lucky, but sometimes you try and have a conversation, and and I've got two kids as well, so once the kids are in bed, the cat knows when the kids are in bed, and now it's like, right, now it's my turn, and just comes up behind <laughs> you. It won't stop meowing until you pick it up. 
that uh, and sounds so, awesome. Yeah. It yeah. is. It is nice. It's much more like a much more like a dog cat. Which is pretty amazing it's... that when you think yeah. of a good cat, you're like, it's like a dog. You know? mm. <laughs> and you don't have to take it for walks or give it a bath. Because That's it does right. It we, yeah. My wife and I live in an apartment and there's a rule where like you can't have pets just if you're renting. And we're like, you know what? If we got a cat, nobody would know. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to take it out. You can hide it in a cabinet or something if somebody stops by. Like, I mean, I'm, totally. on, the re- I'm on the record, you know, saying that. So that's fun. But, yeah. you know, I, there's but you just, no way they'd listen. Just <laughs> chuck Netflix on, man, and just have it on some like random thing like like the Dark, uh, the Dark Crystal, the new Dark Crystal series. Chuck yes. that on. And then it's some creature from the from from the Dark Crystal series just banging on the closet, you know. No one will know. It'll Perfect. Be fine, man. Perfect. You know, I'm writing all of this down. Okay, here we go. Dark <laughs> crystal cat camouflage. I love it. <laughs> yep. Yep. Dude. So was it your dad working in the film and TV that got you interested in it? Um, sort of. Not really. I mean, for me, I, I remember growing up uh, in school. I, I mean, people would say what their dad did, and they're usually quite normal things. Mm-hmm. And my dad was a film and television producer. Which nice. sounded sounded really interesting, but then when someone would say, "So what does he do?" I would always be like, <laughs> "I Everything? don't know." <laughs> yeah. uh, I produces. think he he yeah he produces TV <laughs> and film. Like, yeah. how do you make TV and film? Isn't it just on the television? Yeah. Like, so yeah, my my my, <laughs> it's not a manufacture plant where they create TV shows out of a mold. Yeah, um, <laughs> it, it was much more uh, about, uh, and I kind of started to learn that what he did was making boring things like documentaries and current <laughs> affairs shows sure. and stuff like that. So it was, I always thought it'd be like, yeah, we can make a film one day, Dad. He's like, no, 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 I'm, I'm not doing that stuff. Sure. Um, but um, he. <laughs> <laughs> he um it, it did his film work was quite interesting sometimes like he he went away and it was quite a big part of my um my childhood i remember he went away for like six weeks which is a long time when you're young sure to do uh like the last great cattle range in, in australia which was a, a cattle kind of cattle wrangling kind of thing that he did nice. uh, across the outback and you know, stuff like that so there was I, I, his 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 film work i guess kind of showed me just through osmosis that um and my brother uh, my brothers and i um that i guess an industry in the arts is perfectly fine i mean you know we we grew up with dad being working in tv and film and sometimes having work and sometimes not having work and and it kind of was like a normal sort of state for us sure um but the thing that got me into film uh was really um my brother so i'm the youngest of three oh um, nice yeah and my older brother uh ben he he he's like him and I were right into movies, and Toby was as well, my middle brother. But no, no, me and me and Ben are just, you know, up to our necks, up to our eyeballs in films. You know, Terminator, yeah. Alien. I saw I saw Freddy Krueger when I was seven, the first one. There you go, um, perfect. That age. really <laughs> did not help my sleeping <laughs> uh, growing up, and I think my parents will attest to that. Um, yep. Uh, yeah, so th- those are the films that really. It was the films of the eighties and 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 early nineties that really got us into wanting to work in film and wanting to make film. And my brother, um, Ben, would always be toiling away in his, his bedroom making uh, prosthetics and creatures and little stuff like that. And I was forever doing model kits, uh, like Games Workshop model kits um, oh. and, you know, like Star Wars model kits. And that kind of – that's what I did for a hobby, uh, um, you know. Uh, and then and then when I, we weren't doing that stuff – Ben was getting the things that he made and sticking them to me because I was a little guinea pig. Of course, um, youngest brother. So that, yeah, totally, man. There's 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 photos all through our photo albums of uh, me completely covered head to toe in toilet paper yeah. as a mummy. <laughs> um, there's I think there's one when I was about five or six. He he face painted my face, but he used house paint instead of face paint. <laughs> so my mum had to scrub it off for like two or three hours. Um, That's how you and learn. you know, so yeah, yeah. So that, that was kind of my childhood upbringing, and we, we grew up making films like uh, like um, Super 8 cameras, you know, uh, yeah. uh, when we had to save up and get, get it processed and watch it back on projectors, and that was kind of, you know, what we did for fun. Um, and that's, yeah, that's really what, what got us into the, um, into the kind of whole thing. That's so um, cool. It came in handy. Kids. It did come, it did came in handy, very, very handy, actually. Um, and, and the thing is, is that when I, I was going through high school and my brother kind of finished right when I started, um, mm-hmm. and he went off and did a, a theater course at like a, a very, you know, uh, a very uh, high profile uh, theater, com- uh, theater uh, school in, in Australia, in Sydney, called NIDA. Um, and so he did a, a course there in theater 
crafts and prop making and stuff. Uh, and then when I was in high school, I ended up, well, I was a gymnast from the age of eight. What? Uh, yeah, yeah, I was I was doing gymnastics at eight because my parents Dude. said I kept bounce I kept bouncing off the walls and they couldn't <laughs> stop me and I was like doing handstands and cartwheels and running up the walls and they were like we need we need some way to stop this kid from like just jumping around our house. He needs to stick the uh, landings. That's the problem. Yes. Yeah, yeah. They, they were giving me scores of three and four. You know, I, I couldn't get a solid ten. So <laughs> it's all about the landing, so, Luke. It's all the landing. Yeah. Nothing else matters. <laughs> Nothing else matters. You can do crazy stuff, but the landing's got to be right. And That's right. Give you a 10. Um, and and so I went and started doing gymnastics uh, from the age of eight uh, and, and was really quite, quite good at it um, and um, was, you know, doing competitions, uh, you know, getting lots of medals and stuff. Nice. Um, yeah, which was really cool. And I think it was, um, it was I really enjoyed it uh, up until a point where it kind of got really quite competitive. Sure. Um, and I think I think the com- competition. I'm not a competitive person, although you know Same. people would say you have you have to be in this industry. But I don't know. I, I guess for me, I'm all about collaboration. Yeah. Um, right and so I think with gym, yeah, yeah, gymnastics was very, very uh, singular. It's your your goals, your passions, your drives, and your training, which is great. And you need to have that for certain things. But for me, I kind of. Uh, you know, a bit of teamwork, a bit of collaboration, I think was really helpful. And what was really amazing is that, that during my gymnastics training, a dance teacher came to sort of make uh, the g- boy gymnasts a bit more graceful because they're all, you know, doing gymnastics like robots or doing gymnastics <laughs> like martial artists, you know, and there was no poise and presence. Sure. Uh, and so this, this dance teacher came in and showed us some dance to sort of get us to, you know, to, to do that. And the, the teacher uh, after that one class, pulled my mum aside when I was picked up, and she just said, "Your son is a dancer. He's not a gymnast." Hey. Um, yeah. And so um, I sort of thought about it and was like, "Oh yeah, I'll give dance a go." Uh, and so I started doing dance, um, and yeah, that was um, that was really cool. Right um, that was really fun. Yeah, I, I liked dance. It was it was um, it was interesting um, in the so it would have been in '93 that mm-hmm. I started doing dance, and there was a bit of a stigma. Uh, if you were a boy doing dance in '93 in Australia, and Australia is, um, a, as I said, Australia is a lovely place, but they're often they do like to 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 give you a little bit of ribbing. Oh yeah, they're hardcore. <laughs> for whatever, <laughs> they're, yeah, for whatever they can. Yep. So being a very slight, small uh, dancer who was a boy uh, did give me a little bit of flack. Yeah, asking um, for it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but I did get to hang out with very uh, with the pretty girls, there so I go. didn't really care. Who really there wanted? You go. Uh, yeah, definitely would say me. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was uh, friends with lots of lots of nice girls, and I could know who they all liked and, and things like that. There you go. Um, and and also got to um to really I think uh, I got to, to bond with women uh, and young young women. Um, uh, and it was really for me. I'm I've got no uh, uh you know I guess prejudice against anyone. Um, which is why I love New Zealand as well. Yeah. Um, but with with the girls, I got to kind of, you know, hang out with girls and be friends with girls, and it kind of took down those barriers of you know being a, a teenage boy and going, oh, what's what's happening to my body? Yeah. Um, <laughs> and I I was able to kind of break those barriers and just be really comfortable with um, you know any gender and any kind of and also lots of my friends um, who are boys would you know obviously I'm going to boys dance camp. Uh, there's quite a few boys there who are feeling certain urges and trying to figure out who they are. So I had a lot of friends coming out to me and, and, you know, and it was really nice way to kind of journey into, to being a teenager and figuring out what it was to be a human as far as how you feel about sexuality, how you feel about gender, how you feel about those types of things. And so I think for me, it was a really awesome, um, journey through becoming, I hopefully, uh, a kind of well-adjusted adult. I, I kind of look back on it going, yeah, it was a really, really cool Cool opportunity, I think, to, to you know, to, to see a side of the society that I guess you in the 90s, uh, you didn't really get a lot of publicity around. Yeah, and to get that kind of mm. depth as well at such a young age definitely pays dividends later on. Definitely, um, and, and it means that I'm, I'm I, nothing will sway me on, on, the only thing that really still gets me is, is prejudice and is uh, dis- discrimination and racism Same. and stuff like that. It just makes me go, how? Yep. How, how, how can you feel like this about someone who – and I think it all comes down to choice. Uh, you don't choose to be uh, a certain race. You don't choose to be a certain gender. Well, you True. can now, mm-hmm. which is great. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and, and I think the thing that about that means that you um, – I just – I can't see how someone would go, well, this person is bad because they're 
you know, chose Different. to be this. It's that, yeah, yeah. The whole bl- blue eyes, brown eyes thing. I think is the best way to illustrate it. Absolutely, um, absolutely. Mm. It's a good world now. So, so then you can get like that's the thing that I love the most about like the entertainment industry is mm. it is the most collaborative art form out there. There's mm. so many people coming together to make these things. And that's mm. that's pretty neat. That's pretty neat to to take yeah. dance like that. That's also something that definitely pays off later on. Just learning movement, you know. Well, yeah, and I mean, and talking of of where my career has gone um, yeah. and what I've been doing, the the dance training uh, among everything I think is still the most prevalent that I use. I bet. Um, Definitely acting, because from dance, I then started to do, uh, I just started to do dance when I was about 13, 14, and I did all these dance things, and I ended up, when I was about 15 or 16, I ended up, uh, we did this big thing called the, uh, was it the School of Spectacular or something in, in Australia, and they had a professional uh, dance choreographer come in and teach about two or 300 kids. Oh, cool. Sort of dance stuff, and out of that, she, she picked me uh, and wanted me to join her dance group. There you go. Um, her, her professional dance group, which is like, oh, okay, sweet. So then when I was 14, I started dancing with professional dancers, and they were all, you know, 20s and early 30s and stuff. And that uh, put me to a whole other level of, 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 you know, looking at how people can make a, a career out of performing arts and I dance and, and, and also meeting some very interesting characters. And, in fact, just off the – there was a, a man who I met. I can't remember his name. He was probably mid-30s. And he was he was uh, gay, and he he had a very strong um, uh, I want to call it straightophobia uh, oh. to, to, towards me and my mum. It was very strange because I think my mum was with me the whole time and kind of helping me out. Obviously, you know we're going to bars late at night and, and performances, you know, doing these things. And so she had kind of chaperoned me because you know I'm going to licensed places as a 14 year old, so it's not sure. really something I can do solo. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> Uh, and and he he very much you know was was guarded against us and didn't like talking to us initially and I think it was that whole family unit thing that he found really quite confronting um, but it was really good to then slowly he started to relax to us and became friendly and it was really it was kind of nice and I felt really uh, I felt really um, proud that I could be a, a friend to him who was who was of that you know it was yeah it was a really awesome experience. Um, and I think that also helped me to, to kind of go, actually, if you go and talk to people who feel certain ways about you or about certain people and you break down those barriers, it always comes up um, winning. Absolutely. So that was, yeah, it was an awesome experience. And that's another reason why representation matters. Because if you see another guy yeah. there that's dancing, you're like, oh, sweet, cool. And then you can just mm. connect with them on a different level. And then you're on yeah. a professional level now. It's like you're the yeah. sum total of everybody around you. So you're kicking yeah. your game up like that. That's so cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, it was um, that was an awesome experience, and then from that I started to do um, uh, to do theatre as well. So I started acting, and I kind of always had a bit of you know acting bug, but I was like, no, I'm going to try drama. Uh, and then so I was doing uh, drama at school from like age four, yeah, fourteen, about the same age, fourteen, fifteen, pretty much just doing drama, dance, and doing a lot of extracurricular stuff. Sure. Um, and then you know uh, it was um, yeah, that was that was a great time I think for me. Uh, to really kind of uh, excel, and I kind of, I could kind of sense that I had a, a bit of a, a knack for it, um, especially the dance. Which for me, the dance was never really. Um, it's funny when I think back on it now. The dance was never the thing that really made me uh, get really jazzed. I oh. really loved the act, the acting. The dance was cool, and I loved it. But I kind of felt like it was, yeah, it's like a sport. It felt like Sunday, you know, going to play football or something. Sure. But the acting was the thing that really buzzed me. Uh, and it was really to do with the whole scenes and figuring out people and what their motivations are and things like that. I really love looking at um, stories and characters and trying to figure them out. Um, and I think it was, it was also the ability to play some really, like, I would count myself as a character actor, um, being able to play characters who are very different to me. Yeah. Um, I'm, I like to think of myself as quite a nice kind of um, supportive and funny guy, but playing really horrible, mean, <laughs> evil people is so fun. Sure. Uh, and, and, and you just get to let loose and, and just, you know, uh, and just it's really cool because I think it has no gravitas. It has no actual real um, uh, impact on the people you're working with. Sure. It's all, it's all, you know, obviously within the boundaries of proper theatre. <laughs> right. I just go up and smack people in the face. Yeah. Um, 
I mean, is that the motivation? <laughs> you know? Yeah. Well, how far can know, we push this line? My character made me do it. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I was just feeling it. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, but yeah, there was something really I really enjoyed that, uh, and and being able to kind of play with things, and it was really cool. And um, improv comedy for me is, is something I still really really love. Yeah. Um, yeah. So so yeah, that was a kind of a really cool way uh, to kind of journey through ch- uh, school. Uh, and, and, um, my, my other studies weren't the best. <laughs> uh, who cares? Um, yeah, really. I mean, I made a right. decision. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I made a decision pretty early on that I was like, you know, maths, yeah, uh, English, same. Meh. same. Yeah. Uh, and, and in fact, I learned later on in life that I, um, I have a reading disability. I have dyslexia. Um, and I think that was probably one of the reasons why I'd always stuff up the first reading sure. uh, of a theater play. <laughs> sure. <laughs> um, but then also why I just really I found English quite frustrating. Um, and I didn't really understand it. And I love what they were trying to do. But I, I, you know, got really poor marks and stuff like that. Makes sense. Um, yeah. But, you know, I mean, I think it, it, working with it, um, I think it's fine now. And I think what's really good now is you can say to people, I have dyslexia. You know, please yeah. ignore anything that I miss. You know, and... and um, I think it also helped me to be actors acting is really a strange thing. We have to think about two things at once, which I think is what's really good about Shakespeare is it teaches you, you're almost saying a different language, but you're thinking something different. Absolutely. Um, and it, it kind of tears your performance and your thought process. And I think that having dyslexia has a similar thing where you're, you're reading something and your words, the words are telling you something, but in your brain, you're trying to decipher it. And, um, yeah, I, th- I think it can be advantageous. Oh, that makes sense. Makes sense. I've never thought mm. about it that way. Mm. And yet, mm. you power through. You've been doing. Yeah, you, yeah, yeah. And I think um, I, I powered through, and I, I ended up finishing high school uh, and and looking at what I was wanting to do. And it was pretty clear to me that acting was was like the only thing I wanted to do. Yep. So I I finished high school, uh, and I was like, I just need to get a job. I cut my hair. I had long hair. It was grunge era. There you so go. So I had uh, I had long hair down in my down in my bum. Oh, uh, nice. And, yeah, yeah. Get it. And then I <laughs> I, I went for a I went for an interview and I told all my mates before I went to the interview. I'm like, I'm going to interview at this high class restaurant. And they're like, What if they tell you to cut your hair? I'm like, Nah. <laughs> I'm going to tell them. No, you can get stuffed. I don't need your job. <laughs> and then, <laughs> and then whip I turned them with up your the hair. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I turned up and I was like, uh, and I had the interview and the guy says, cool, cut your hair and we'll see you on Monday. And I went, okay. <laughs> and then, um, yeah, went, went back, got a haircut and then, yeah, you got a job. <laughs> yeah. uh, totally balked on that one. Yeah. Um, but uh, you blinked. so you can't yeah, blink, Luke. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. I, I, I stuffed. But anyway, I got the job. And it was a really cool job. There you go. It was uh, working in a restaurant. It was, you know, it was fun. Uh, and then, um, my, my bro gives me a call about six months in, uh, Ben, and he was like, he, I, he'd gone over to New Zealand for some, something, I don't know what it was. Uh, and he'd met, well, he'd been, he'd been in Sydney a couple of months before and he'd met this guy, uh, Jason from Weta Workshop. Uh, and we knew who Weta was back in the late nineties, um, from like Bad Taste and Brain Dead and Meet the Feebles and. Yeah. Um, yeah. That that also, which we'd used to, you know, watch when we were kids and stuff, and Frighteners, obviously. Um, and and we knew who Weta was, but uh, and my brother was a big fan of them. But he says, "Oh, yeah, this guy from Weta Workshop. I'm going to go and work on some project in New Zealand. I I can't tell you what it is, and I don't even know what it is." Oh, uh, nice. And so he 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 left uh, Sydney, uh, and then if, about I don't know three or about five or six months after I started working. Um, uh, he gives me a call and he's like, Hey, um, do you want to come to New Zealand? And I'm like, why would I want to go to New Zealand? <laughs> I'm in Sydney, man. Like, I'm, I'm about to go this to... restaurant thing. <laughs> oh, it's, I'm, well, the thing is I was, I was, I'm like, I'm working in a restaurant. I'm going to go to drama school next year. I'm living the dream. And it's yeah. just like, now I look back at that. It's like every actor is saying that, you yeah, know, it's, it's like, <laughs> so have you heard the joke? What, what's the, uh, the, the, the most frequent line an actor says? Oh, what is it? Can I take your order, please? <laughs> You're not wrong. <laughs> yeah, so uh, I was living my cliched. <laughs> <laughs> I was living my cliched dream, uh, and so um, he says I'll come to New Zealand for a, a snowboarding holiday, uh, and then and then because I was a bit of a, a fan of snowboarding, and then he's like, and then see you know come and see we can get you a job at Weta. I'm like, oh okay, I've got a bit of experience, but I'll, I'll, I'll see how we go. So I kind of, I, I left on a whim and um, I quit my job. Man, I was, man, I was free back then. <laughs> Being 18, I could just quit my job and not care. Yeah, who needs um, it? Who needs it? Uh, and so I quit my job, 
flew to New Zealand, uh, and then and then he was he told me like uh, we went on a snowboarding holiday, and then I'm like I think on the Saturday, Sunday evening, he says so the job that you're going to be coming into tomorrow is Lord of the Rings, Dude. Uh, and I was just like what? <laughs> He's like <laughs> Lord of the Rings. I'm like you mean like the, the the Hobbit, and then like you know the Lord of the Rings. He's like yeah yeah yeah. I'm like oh my god, uh, and so I turned up on Monday. And walked into Weta and was just like walking around, and there was um, it was two weeks before we started. They started shooting principal photography. Wow! Um, and so it was like there were armies, there was armor, there was orcs, there was urukai all through the corridors. There was massive miniatures, massive bigotures, and I was just walking around, just going, "Holy! Can I swear?" Yeah, of course. <laughs> okay, holy shit! <laughs> this I bet. is unbelievable like it like i walked in and it was it wasn't minister at that stage it was like minister morgul or something and it was just this castle that was like three stories high and Dude. and i was just like oh my god it was like literally um not a kid in a candy store it was like i died and gone to heaven um and yeah and so i i completely forgot about acting i was like who cares about that <laughs> and and so i Fair. i started i started just meddling around and my brother had mentioned to jason who was a guy he met who was a workshop supervisor jason doherty at the time and he just um he said oh well let, let's let's put you to task there's so much work to do and you've got a little bit of experience in mold making and i'm like yeah i've watched my brother make some molds and I've run some foam latex and I've worn a whole bunch of crazy stuff, but I haven't made a lot of things apart from model kits. Um, and so I, um, actually putting together tree beard, the, the tree beard maquette was one of the what? first jobs I did. What? Yeah. Yeah, I know. Uh, I know. No big deal. Was, I mean, whatever. No, no, no. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> what? Uh, and then, and then I started working, um, doing prosthetic stuff like running foam and, um, helping out making molds and, and then really just learn on the job. Uh, and then the next, I mean, the next five years of my life, um, well, probably it was 93, so, no, not 93, 99, and then I, it was 2003 we wrapped on that. So four years, basically, of my life um, was just a dream and, and just like a stupor of tiredness. Um, like, we worked so hard on that job. And we're all so young. Like, I was 18 and I was the youngest in the shop. But most other people were like, oh, this guy's really old. He's 28. <laughs> um, you know, and, and Richard and Richard was like, Richard Taylor was, I met Richard, which was so, so awesome. Yeah. He, he was, he's such a character. Uh, he was 35 or something, 36 back then. Um, Dude. and so, you know, and we were just mucking and making the stuff and we, we'd get briefs, like we get, Oh, Hey, we need to do this decapitated snagger head. And we just go, okay, cool. And so three of us would just get together, get the life cast of Jed Brophy and get the, you know, the prosthetic, stick it on, make a mold run a silicon, it was, it was unbelievable. Um, and, and that, that time, and, you know, I'd go on location like to Queenstown and to, um, and to Twizel and, and we'd shoot on Oakunia, which is the Mount Doom. And, um, uh, we, we would, you know, we were shooting with, you know, 150 orcs and hundred Gondorian, you know, and all these elves and just massive, massive battle scenes. And Dude. it was, yeah, yeah, it was, um, unbelievable. And, and everyone who, who we're working with, uh, who worked on rings at that time, it was like a, um, it's like a, uh, it was like high school, but like the coolest high school you can imagine. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and it's, we call them rings brothers and ring sisters because you, you still see them around and, and you have that, those years of, of, of going through, um, together that journey. And, and we knew, we thought we were making magic when, before the first film came out in 2001, we were all a bit like after principal photography, we were like, is this going to go okay? Is this going to be a good film? Yeah. <laughs> uh, and then and then we watched the first um, the first film, Fellowship, and and it was just like a holy shit. Movie. Yeah. 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 We were like okay, uh, and so then the next the next few years, um, we knew we were making magic, um, and it was yeah, it was unbelievable. Dude. Unbelievable. Your first movie yeah. was Lord of the Rings. <laughs> yeah, I know. What? I know. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it was. Um, <laughs> It was, uh, yeah, pretty, pretty, pretty amazing time. And I, 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 I cannot uh, pass up and I cannot go talk about my career and what I've done without acknowledging my brother um, yeah. who, who really, you know, he, he went out on a limb and was basically knew that, you know, what I wanted to do and he wanted to support me but also knew that really uh, this was an opportunity. And to put me forward like that with other, like he was trying to explain to me a Matrix mold, which is 
on the way when we we're doing that snowboarding trip. And he was trying to explain to me, you know what a matrix mold is. You just do, you know, you get the sculpture, you put clay on it, fiberglass, you take the fiberglass off, you replace the clay with silicon, and then you cut the back off, and then the thing's gone. I'm like, what? what? <laughs> but he, and he, he completely just said, knew that I could do it, uh, which was, you know, really, really amazing compliment to get from your older brother. That's so um, cool. Yeah. Um, and then also with Jason Doherty basically giving me a chance, just going literally off um, – off reading me as a person who was who was enthusiastic um and and you know and then and then i think just seeing that i worked my butt off it was it was you know i i do realize and richard taylor as well being such an amazing mentor uh and such an amazing person to work with i i, I do not pass over how amazing the opportunity was and forever will be i remember the first two weeks i was working here tanya who's the the share owner of the company and richard's wife said to me um you haven't filled out your timesheet you know, we need to get your bank details. And I just kept saying, I, I don't care. You don't have to pay me. I, I just, I'm just so happy to work here. That's right. I'll pay you. Me for this. Yeah, 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 totally. Uh, and, and I finally, when I when was getting really, really hungry, I'm like, I probably should get paid. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't eaten in weeks and the silicone tastes terrible. <laughs> yes, yes. And man, the thing that's coming out the other end ain't pretty. Yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> How bad do you want it, Luke? <laughs> <laughs> yeah so um yeah that was uh yeah and amazing and and also uh in in um 2003 we're doing pickups for return of the king yes. um and it was a it was a, a pretty awesome time and that was actually as long as i think his principal photography was the, the pickups on return of the king was you know amazingly mind-blowing um but we um needed a new phone runner and so um uh, jason uh doherty hired this this young woman uh called francis richardson um, who was just been working over in England um, doing foam latex, and she was a Kiwi, and she moved back to New Zealand. Uh, and and I I met her uh, in the mould room, and instantly kind of thought she was pretty awesome. Uh, and she thought I was pretty awesome. Um, and uh, we started dating, and then we've now been married for twelve years, and we've got two kids. There you go. Um, yeah. So so again, Jason Doherty, I have to thank him. <laughs> Because uh, he gave me a job and he gave me a wife and a family, and so, yeah, it's um, yeah, it's amazing how life gives you, you know, gives you uh, can give you lemons. But I'm I'm pretty lucky. I've been given a whole bunch of chocolate. Yeah, um, Lord of yeah, the Rings, man. So, yeah, Lord of the Rings. It's a pretty formative thing for me. It's dude, and what like a cultural phenomenon those movies were as well. So I'm I'm a pretty massive Star Wars fan, but Lord of the Rings mm-hmm. is like right up there. Because just mm. that you just watch the opening scene of the fellowship, and you're like, oh, this is, this is different. Like you can yeah. you can tell when the paradigm shifts. And yeah. dude, your first movies, because they, they, they shot all of those like basically at once. It was like back to back. Yeah, back. yeah. They they shot. Uh, we shot um, uh, principal photography. I uh, went from like um, like September October '99 uh, through to um, like I think like mid 2001 um, and, or maybe a little bit later. And then, and that was, they were shooting all three films at the same time, but really it was like 95 to 99% of film one, about 50 to 60% of film two, or probably more than that, sorry, more like 80%. And then about 30% of film three. Um, Cause film three uh, really was just so massive. Yeah. Um, and then we did pickups for film two, uh, which was a, a short sort of stint in 2000 and, one uh 2002 and then then the pickups of 2003 were massive um they were on 130 shoot days or something like that wow um yeah so it was a it was a long journey but those were all in a stretch like you know 99 to 2003 we're working with lord of the rings sure that's that's pretty much all we were doing um yeah um and so that that had a whole bunch of amazing and also like you know, winning. I'm, I'm, I'm actually the office I'm sitting in right now is the conference room at Wetter, and I'm, I'm staring at um, one, two, three, four, five Oscars, uh, four Baftas, um, a whole you know room full of trophies, um, and, well and yeah, yeah. Man. So, and I mean, for us to win like visual effects and, and win best makeup to like you know 2001 and 2003 for, for the team who did creatures and makeup is just. Oh, it, it, it's it's pinch yourself still, um, you know, looking at that stuff, um, uh, and and I think the greatest thing about the Kiwi mentality is that we didn't we did it this way and we we did it the way we did because we didn't know, 
We, yeah. we, we were so <laughs> the internet was so different back then, and, and technology was so different back then. We didn't even really know uh, what we were doing, really, to be honest. But we we all of like publications and talking to people like um, Richard, and you know, had, had a whole bunch of work with oh, Hercules and Xena with um, K and D effects, and there's a lot of job sharing there. Um, um, and, you know, but we, we were trying new things like silicon prosthetic technology and we didn't really know how we were doing that and we just kind of talked to some people and figured it out and Gimli was a silicon prosthetic and so was Alerts. Um, and right. so th- those those things were, um, you know, done on the fly. Um, but, you know, and, and that's, I think, what it was, the ingenuity and that, that a bit of ability to go, look, we don't know how to do it, but let's give it a go and we can figure it out and trust in, in our crew and trust in ourselves, um, which in, ended up getting us some, you know, some cool accolades, but some really cool films. Yeah, it worked out. It worked out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So what was, do you have a favorite thing that you worked on from the Lord of the Rings trilogy? Where you're like, every time you see it, you're like, you know what? That one right there. That's my, that's my baby right there. I, I really, really enjoy uh, looking at Gimli um, yeah. because he was a prosthetic I worked on pretty much every day. Uh, for a few years, making the prosthetics that I'd sent to set, and then Gino Acevedo and, and Dominic Till would apply. And I'm pretty happy with, because sometimes I look at that still and I'm like, it doesn't look like a makeup. Yeah. Um, it, it's it's pretty amazing. Um, but I think I think Lurtz um, uh, oh. making his makeup um, was pretty amazing. And he, he's he's one of the most iconic characters, definitely from the first film, but also from from um, from the rest of the, the series. I, I, I think Lurtz is, is such a cool character. So, yeah, that, that was pretty... Um, yeah. I totally agree. Pretty pretty cool. Yeah. That's one of yeah. my favorite moments in the entire trilogy is from the first movie. And it's mm. when it's when Aragorn lets Frodo go and then he goes around the corner and there's just an army of mm. orcs. And mm. dude, just little things in that movie like Aragorn's my dude. And that oh, yeah. that fight with Lurtz when he like chucks the dagger back at him and he blocks it. I'm like, This is the greatest movie I've ever seen. And yeah. Lurtz yeah. is such a badass. It's so uh, cool. L- Lawrence McCorre, who played yes. him, uh, he's such a cool guy. He's so funny. Um, my brother um, and Jason and Gino did his makeup, um, did Lutz's makeup, and and my brother for, for a lot of the time would actually have just to hold his head because he just fall asleep. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, and and that fight scene um, was was um, I know that the licking of the knife was ad libbed by Lawrence. What? Um, and and that that scene where he throws the knife at 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 Vigo. Uh, and he blocks it. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure. I'm not 100 percent sure that that was a fluke. That was like a one take where Vigo actually pinged it <laughs> and flicked it off. Um, yeah, yeah. No, it was. It, and it's it's the ability for 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 us and, and for Peter to kind of get in there and just give people license. I think as always, when you get magic, amazing stuff, as you give characters and actors, you know, just see what you come up with and giving them license to to make it their own. And magic like that happens. And v- look, Vigo's the man. V- Vigo, absolutely. Is the, Oh, he's a king. Such a cool guy. Yeah. He's a king. Yeah. You see the behind the scenes yeah. of like last day on set and he's like headbutting everybody. I'm like, this is incredible. <laughs> <laughs> he, he, he did headbutt all the uh, stunties whenever he'd yes. meet them. Uh, and, and so, yeah, the stunties, uh, yeah, yeah, it was, it was a, a nice little camaraderie for them. Uh, uh, but I think sometimes I'd be like, where's Vigo? Shit, I gotta get away. Get away. He's gonna, he's gonna headbutt me again. He's coming. He, he doesn't play yeah. around. <laughs> no, no. He's tough as nails, Vigo. Yeah. That's incredible. Yeah. So when you say you worked on Gimli, is that like his scale double, and then you put no? On him? How does that so work? So I worked on I worked on his scale double. So I I basically um, I created the prosthetics that that John Rhys Davies uh, would wear, and also the oh, scale cool. double would wear as well. So when I say created, I'm I'm running the prosthetics every day. So um, Jamie Biss Warwick uh, did the sculpting of sculpting of that, um, and then then Jason Doherty, you know, sort of talks about how the molds are going to work and how the prosthetics are going to work. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then so once the molds established, um, I I went through and and created uh, and ran all the prosthetics. So I was running like one a day um, for for years, um, and and they. They now there's a really clear system of how you use it. There's like a I'm an encapsulant um, with silicon, and, and then these these oh, sorry there's a dog outside. You're good. Um, <laughs> we got lots of dogs in the office. Um, uh, and and so I would uh, basically paint latex on the surface, and then put some flocking in it, and then mix up the silicon, and put it in the mold, and then demold it, and play with different levels of the skin text, the skin opacity, and and things like that. Um, working with Gino the whole time because he's painting each prosthetic and and putting it on set. Um, and that's that whole kind of thing of, of uh, ingenuity is, is that there was a silicon prosthetic system in L.A. or in, in the States, but there definitely wasn't one in New Zealand. Um, 
and so we we were kind of just dabbling and trying to fix it um, through trial and error, really. Um, and and then so once we had established it, then you know we had to run it for a whole few years. Uh, and scale Gimli's mold just ended up just turning into this buttery mess, um, <laughs> which I had to had to had to fix every day. <laughs> um, but you know it was it all all kind of worked out. Um, and you know there the, yeah it, it's it's again. See a problem, fix it. You know, don't don't get all your hands and and get your undies in a twist, as we say here. Um, you know, just just move forward. Um, sure. And um, yeah. And that so. makes you invaluable to a film set as well, because it's so even like I can't even imagine that scale, that level of production. But it's like you got to keep going. Time is money. You just you just figure it out. So yeah. That's a testament to your brother being like he can do this even before you knew you could do it. That's pretty amazing. Yeah. 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 No, it, it was, it was pretty amazing. And, and I think you also find your feet as to the things that you, you know, there's a lot of people like me um, who hadn't had a lot of experience, but uh, you know, will keen and willing to give it a go. And you just sort of find people's knacks and, and mine is, is for looking at things and problem solving. Um, I think of just trying to figure out ways to do it. And then also remembering like, uh, different materials uh attributes and failures and stuff like that and i mean i'm constantly doing that still on the floor at the moment at where figuring out what will work what won't work and you know using a library of of mistakes in order to inform how you think you should move forward um with a certain problem or task sure sure Mm. so then Mm. how did you feel when you got done with lord of the rings was it like you felt this chapter close yeah, we were always a little bit like I remember saying I was as the last because I also went on set and started applying prosthetics as well. Um, so I was applying orcs. Um, oh, uh, sweet. For, yeah, yeah, that was really cool. I, I really, um, again, I said to Jason, look, I really want to give prosthetic application because I've done a bit in the shop uh, for test makeups and stuff like that, but not on set. And so then I got to do to do some more on set, like doing feet on the first film, which is kind of just pretty normal. But I got to apply some um, uh, hero prosthetics for the two towers with the the Urukai and the white the oh, white hand sweet. thing. Oh, uh, sweet! Um, and then also uh, I got to do uh, some. Then I went on set for Return of the King pickups and just was applying orcs for weeks, um, which was you know which was super cool. Uh, and then yeah. I remember we said for probably two or three weeks, uh, last orc I'll ever apply. Oh, they've extended the shoot. <laughs> oh, this is the last orca. Oh, okay, they've extended the shoot. We had five rap parties for Return of the King. That's um, amazing. Because they'd book the rap party, <laughs> they'd hire the space, they'd pay for it, and then they'd be like, oh, we're extending the shoot. And then it'd be like you had all these parties, and then the last party was like, oh, yeah, we're just getting, this is just a normal piss up, right? We're just going to have drunk, you know, have a fun time. And yeah. then it's just like, we're not shooting tomorrow? Really? <laughs> oh, okay, cool. <laughs> um, but, but, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, end, end of end of rings kind of uh, trailed up, and we had that massive walk through um, Wellington. Did you, uh, did you did you remember that they had the world premiere for yes. uh, Return of the King in Wellington, and we we walked. I was I was with the procession of hobbits that walked down oh, that red cool. carpet that spanned through the city. My wife and I actually we were walking with all these hobbits. Um, That's so cool. Walking down, which was yeah, that that was like I I, I forget about these things, eh? You, like you, you you just say them again, and you're like. We did that. We stopped yeah. <laughs> a whole city and had a red carpet. That's right. Like and walked all the way through the city and from government to the embassy theater and it was um yeah it was brilliant. It was an amazing and just to see everyone. What was really funny is is that uh, people like Elijah and Orlando and stuff they they'd been in Wellington and in New Zealand for you know three or four years shooting the films, mm-hmm. and then the minute there was this 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 world premiere and this red carpet, all these massive fans came out of the woodworks going, oh my god, it's Orlando. Oh my god, it's Elijah. I live <laughs> and you're just like. The, like they were in like the city like three weeks ago, like just hanging out in a bar, and now you're like you're going crazy. Um, Raptors, uh, but man. It, yeah, they make a difference. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but um, it was um, it was a cool time, and it was really uh, again, you know, uh, pinch yourself, kind of wow, we, we were able to, to to see this and have the support of the country come behind us for this this project. It was um, yeah, unbelievable, super cool. I bet. And now you can think back. Mm. That see, that's the service I provide. Is I'm like, hey, remember all those cool things you did. And then you're like, yeah. Oh, yeah, you're right. I did. I did. Yeah, yeah, I did. I did. It was. I was pretty lucky. That's right. I'm here to help. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, so, man. So, what did? What was the next thing you did? Um. Then we did um King Kong and Narnia. Oh, um, pretty sweet. Much. Peter yeah. Jackson again. Yeah, Peter Jackson, and and so we did King Kong with Peter Jackson, which was which was an undertaking. Um, and it was the same but different. 
a much I think there was much more visual effects um, I think that was kind of going on there and and this is when the creatures like it was always a toss up for big creatures you know gonna it was visual effects for rings but for Kong it was kind of like eh, this middle creature is now going to be visual effects and this this little creature is going to be visual effects and so for us our our kind of a scale of what we were going to do um, was a little bit reduced but we were still very much used as kind of like creature anatomy studies. And we did all these um, maquettes of kind of, because back then ZBrush and, and you know, those 3D modeling programs were nothing like what they were, like this is 2004, 2005. Mm-hmm. Um, and so we were doing a lot of sculptures and a lot of um, molding and casting to then do digital kind of scanning. Um, and so we were sending these, these digital scans all around the world for then the, the digital guys to animate. Um, but also making cool stuff like Tommy guns and yeah. Um, and and yeah, that stuff's pretty cool, man. And the minute you pull one out of the mold, you just end up having pretend fights in the workshop. Of course, um, you yeah, gotta, you got to christen them. You got to break them. Yeah, in. hell yeah. <laughs> uh, actually, funny, funny story. Richard, Richard will often like, and this is back on like King Kong uh, Narnia days, um, especially when we're making lots of different types of swords. You'd be working away, and you'd you'd hear this, "Oi, Luke, catch!" And you'd turn around. <laughs> And you'd, you'd see a sword coming towards you and catch the sword, and then he'd just start attacking you with the sword, and you have to start defending yourself. Uh, and, and, you know, and you're like, oh, what's going on? What's going on? And then he's just testing a sword out. It was just, you know. The greatest <laughs> job ever. What? <laughs> Dude. Yeah. Like yeah, just, yeah. My job was getting into sword fights with Richard Taylor. I mean, on a Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is hard though when you're in the middle of making a mold and then suddenly it turns around and he's attacking you and you're like, yeah. the silicon's going off, I need to make some mold. Yeah. Um, but, you know, uh, it, it's it's a great way to spend a Wednesday afternoon. I bet. Um, yeah, yeah. It's like so, old, so old kung fu movies where it's like they give you a bowl of water and then start hitting you. You're like, don't spill the water. Yeah. Don't spill the water. You're like, Go, hold on, hold on. <laughs> yeah, that, that happens quite a lot. We, we, the, a lot of uh, Tom uh to keep us going, especially in the wee hours of the morning because it can be quite long and enduring hours. And so, you know, Making it really un, un, unpleasant for everyone somehow makes it better. <laughs> <laughs> you got to get through it somehow. Yeah, yeah, uh, and so yeah, that that was a that was a, a, a cool kind of transition into Narnia, which was a, a big thing, sort of space for us, uh, and lots of armies and lots of creatures, and working with K and B again, which was really cool, and uh, lots of friends made there. Um, Howard Berger, uh, who's the head of K and B, is a really good friend of Richard and and a lot of the team. And we kind of swap a lot of crew members like Tammy Lane and Bill Hunt all started at KMB and then they ended up moving to New Zealand and stuff. So, um, so yeah, that was, that was a really cool time. Um, and then something happened. I'm trying to figure out what was the ins- instigation. Oh, I did a film. That's right. I did a film. Uh, so this is coming, going back 2001. Mm-hmm. I did a film. Uh, it was a very, 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 very micro budget film. Pretty much people with digital cameras and a script sure. and actors. Uh, and so I kind of, yeah, I know. Um, I um, I ended up uh, auditioning and getting a role and, and, and doing this film. Nice. And although, yeah, it was cool, but it was it was very it was interesting for me because I I watched these people making this film and that was their second film or something, a micro budget film. It's basically a whole bunch of students with a camera and some lunch money. Mm-hmm. Um, and they the way they were making this film was so contrasting to the way we we're making. Lord of the Rings uh, and, you know, the other films I was working on at the time, I was just like, man, there's something in here. Maybe maybe I could do something like this. You know, maybe me and my oh, brother could do something like this. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, so um, I um, was on a snowboarding trip with my mate Theo, who was working at Weta, uh, and, and we just came up with this concept of this, I, this idea uh, of two guys uh, on a road trip uh, who basically one of them wakes up and then, uh, the journey that the car breaks down, but then they don't know where they are and they don't know if the night's going to end. And, and, and it's kind of the, there's this con, you know, that was the concept. Yeah. And from that, I just, I started writing a script. Um, and I, I was kind of like, I really, I really want to make a film. Um, and so I was starting to go, I really want to get back into acting. Uh, was a thing I wanted to do. And so I, um, I left Weta, um, and I Whoa. started to, yeah, I know it was a big, a big Bold. thing. Um, and I, I, I had an agent, um, and I started to audition and I, I started to do some, uh, theater. Um, and then from theater, I, I started to, you know, uh, branch out and, and do some, um, TV and film stuff. Um, and it, all the while writing the script underneath. Um, and then I showed it to my brother and, and my brother was like, this is kind of cool concept. This is kind of a cool concept. The script needs a lot of work. Um, but you know, I think it's really cool. Um, but for then some reason we decided not to work on the script so much. 
uh, <laughs> and we started to start shooting it uh, in some in a, in a Christmas holiday. Um, which is summer in um, in, uh, in in New Zealand, of course. Uh, and so, yeah, we we started to we we cast the guy, did some theatre work with in the, in the opposing role, and we went out and started making a film with a whole bunch of weather buddies. There you um, go. Yeah, and it was um, it was a really really uh, informative thing for me. Of of I knew uh, massive scale but uh, filmmaking right. and very very micro budget filmmaking. And then this is kind of somewhere in the middle because I now had an understanding of producing, of uh, casting, of all these kind of other avenues that I hadn't understand of, understood about. And same with my brother uh, and, and his partner time, Fre- Freya, who's a producer, who was producing it with us. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and we basically got together and, and made this micro-budget film. And we, um, I think we had a, 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 probably a budget of about thirty thousand nice. dollars, um, which was all of us just saving up and chipping in. Yeah, uh, and yeah, we we made this we made this film, and it was kind of a, a journey for about a year and a half for us. Um, uh, we'd go out every weekend and shoot stuff in a in a little uh, warehouse down the road from Wetter and borrow gear from Wetter. And Richard had, was always really really supportive. And this I wasn't even working here at this time. I was um, I was acting and and I was having other odd jobs as well. Um, and you know, and he was helping out my brother and we, yeah, we made a film and we edited it and, um, yeah, we put it into some festivals and we got into a couple of festivals and, um, yeah, it was kind of pretty, pretty awesome. Sure. Um, you went to yeah, the best and film that, school there is, which is yeah, one of yeah. the biggest set ever. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, and it was, it was really, it was kind of cool. I mean, I, I think back now to the film and I, I'm, 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 it's on the tip of my tongue of saying it, but I don't want to in case someone who's listening to this actually finds it and watches it <laughs> because it was, it was, uh, 10 years ago and it was, uh, it was, I, I would like to say it was at mine and my brother's film school. Uh, we learned a lot about filmmaking, a lot about writing and, and development of characters and stuff like that. Sure. Um, and, um, the film was Black Spot. I've said it. Okay. It's out there. It's called <laughs> it, Black there Spot. There we go. He's, yeah, you're a brave um, man. <laughs> yeah, uh, and it, I don't think you'll find it online because I've sunk it very deep. Oh, um, challenge but accepted. There's... <laughs> <laughs> I got a few there's... of those too. Don't worry. <laughs> okay, cool, cool. Uh, there's some trailers online, uh, and and um, one time I'll release it. Um, but it was look, it was um, it was for what it was, and for what we did, and the duress we did it. I think it's it's not bad. I think really where it fell down was the script, um, and I think that's what I've learned now is is that story is key. Characters yep. is key and everything else, really. I mean, you know, it was a very expensive lesson to learn. I bet. Um, but um, we still, it's from that, I, I got some more work and my brother's, you know, uh, got more stuff coming up, um, which is really exciting. Um, and off the back of that, um, I think that's where I got a, I got a really good agent uh, in New Zealand um, and then Gail. Uh, and now um, off of that, I, I, I got to work on Avatar, yeah. um, which, was, which was pretty cool. Um, well, a pretty big yeah. movie, I guess. <laughs> yes, another big movie. I, I don't know what's going on, man. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm listing these movies off. Uh, Black Spot, the biggest film. No, no. That's what uh, I'm saying. That's the calling <laughs> card. <laughs> Lord of the Rings. Okay, I guess. That's yeah, your thing. Yeah. Avatar. This... Mm, all right. Black Spot, yeah. though. That's the, oh, that's, this guy worked on Black Spot. That's the claim to fame. <laughs> Not only that, he yeah. wrote it. What? Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. Um, uh, so, so yeah, then I got to work on Avatar, um, purely based off. Uh, I, I did. Uh, it was uh, because I'm, I'm a very similar size to Giovanni Ribisi, uh, nice. and so I, I'm, I, I was his stand-in double, and his, um, I, uh, and so that was what I was hired for is his double, uh, for you know, standing in, which is. Standard such awesome. an amazing it's such an amazing opportunity and if, if anyone who's an actor is listening and they're asked if they if they're going to be a stand-in on on a, on a film of, of any scale i would say yes agree don't worry about so it on better. your cv oh yeah. don't worry about it on your cv it's not going to be something you're going to have a uh, of a claim to fame to but what it will do is it will give you the ability to see a a, a film set and see the way actors work and see the way directors work and see you're a fly on the wall of this amazing amazing um uh, uh, it's it's a privilege, and the other thing you learn, and what I, I and all other actors I've worked with who've been stand-ins as well, is when the other actor is in makeup or they need to set the scene, you get to end up acting with people like Sigourney Weaver, yeah, um, and and you know, and watching Giovanni Ribisi line for line and, and talking to the director, like you, you get such an amazing window in into that process. Um, Absolutely, and, yeah, and you and, get cast and, and crew food. And you do get cast and crew. <laughs> Funny story. So I'm high. I'm a very slight guy. 
Same. And uh, I was hired. Oh, cool. Uh, <laughs> I was hired uh, for uh, for Giovanni Ribisi because he's a very slight guy too. Mm-hmm. Now we're we're having the craft services and and on Lord of the Rings, craft services was not as um, nice as it is on on you know LA jobs because it was quite a small small film like budget as far as you know the stretch of what those millions of dollars is going for. Mm-hmm. On Avatar, it was a bit different. So craft services was cakes and pudding. Uh, oh, lots and lots of sausages, chocolate bars, uh, all this stuff. So it, I had to go for runs at lunchtime uh, to, to work off this, this craft services <laughs> belly I started to get because I wasn't fitting into Giovanni's clothes. Uh, so <laughs> it was like, oh, my God, they're going to fire me, man. I'm getting too fat. <laughs> suck it in. Suck it in. <laughs> Don't it embarrass in. yourself, Luke. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's like, if, if we, what lens have we got on? G, Giovanni didn't look this big when we were shooting it. What, yeah, what what's Luke, happening? What, what, what are you? <laughs> get away from the cameraman. You're too big in the frame. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, um, so uh, yeah, that, that was a funny a funny thing. Uh, but but um, uh, I got to, I'm a bit of a character uh, on set, and I got, to, um, I got to kind of be known a bit. Um, and then um, I remember there was a guy who was sick. Um, who was doing a, a, a role um, uh, on Avatar and um, Jim, basically this guy went home sick and they were like, we need to shoot the scene today or we're stuffed. And they said, oh, well, let's put this person in. And Jim, James Cameron just said, no, I want Luke. Hey, I want Luke to do it. And I was just go. like, oh man. And so, yeah, I got chucked into this. So that's the, if you watch Avatar, you can, can see me telling Norm to touch his fingers to his thumbs. And after he wakes up in his Avatar body um, and, yes. um, that that was an experience that was pretty amazing because James Cameron, like Aliens and, you know, yeah. Terminator and, you know, Terminator 2, you know, these, these are films that have ugh, shaped who I was and why I'm in the industry. Um, he, he he literally threw this these lines at me while I was in the costume and then he's behind the camera. He just threw this page of dialogue at me and says, okay, roll camera. And then I just had to do the scene and act against bits of fishing line with masking tape on the end. Sure. Um, and I was so shit scared. I um, but, but, um, but I, you know, it, it ended up going well. I, I don't know how, I think I lucked it. Um, but, uh, it was, it, yeah, it was an amazing experience because Jim's a very, very, uh, vibrant character on set. Um, and, uh, it was, um, it was such a cool, cool opportunity. And again, on a massive diff- different scale of, of fantasy to then sci-fi and sci-fi is all about lighting and sci-fi is all about green screen. And then you've got these blue people that no one can see yeah. running around, you know, it was, um, yeah, it was, it was a cool opportunity. And I got on a lot of really good contacts and a lot of really good, um, as I said, a learning experience as being a stand in on set. I learned a lot about the filmmaking, um, uh, process, uh, which was, yeah, undeniably valuable for, for anything further that I did from that. It's the way to go. Being a stand in yeah. is awesome. I was a yeah. stand in for Richard Schiff for an episode of Ballers just because oh. we're like the same height and build. And they're like, yep. get in here. So the whole, the same thing. I was like, oh, wow. Oh, wow. So to watch him do a scene and you're like having yeah. to imitate where he goes and how he closes the door. And then it's mm. like you break for craft services and they're like, oh, you're standing. So you go here. I was like, is this steak? What is happening? <laughs> <laughs> Like, yeah. What have I been yeah. doing? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Where's the slop I'm used to? Yeah, all this um, background food. What's going on yeah, here? Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, but it, but it, yeah, and it does. I think the thing is getting the ability to 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 do scenes with um with uh, actors uh, of that caliber. You really learn a lot. Yeah. Um. And and I th- yeah, totally, man. Look Sigourney Weaver in the eye and and give her give her a shakedown, um, which. Which has helped me um, in, in uh, recent years uh, with another project that I was working on, which we'll get to. I, yeah, we I will. Yeah, mm. we will. Dude. Yeah. That's pretty amazing when somebody is influenced by movies and then you're being directed by James Cameron in scenes with Sigourney Weaver. I mean, what is your life? I, I, I know. And that was know, after you I, worked on Lord of the Rings. <laughs> I know. I know. I know. It's weird. Killing it. Um, <laughs> Uh, but it, it, I think the thing that you learn more and more as you go in the industry, and, and it, it's helped me because I, being uh, as a, a wetter technician, as a specialty costume supervisor, I end up working with uh, actors like that, and in very close proximity, and they're in their underwear and they're sweaty and they need this nose blown and you know things like that. Is everyone's human, right? Uh, and, and everyone is, is is that person. And, and the thing is, is if you gush over them. I mean, this is who I am. If you gush over them and you, you treat them like, oh, you know, Miss Weaver and da da da, they end up, uh, there's this distancing you get from them and you don't end up being their colleague. You end up being their their support person and, and they don't see you as 
uh, not as an equal. It's more like you're just you're just a support person. Where's my mask? Where's my helmet? Or right. why isn't this guy? You know, oh, that dog's trying to kill someone. Um, <laughs> why isn't this guy saying his lines properly? You know, right. versus if you on the same level, you're a collaborator and and you're all doing a job together. And and I've never really come across anyone who has demanded a certain amount of I'm so and so. So this is how you talk to me. Sure. Um, and in fact, we we were told a little bit with James, James um, Cameron. You know, don't don't talk to him too um, cordially, you know, too, too relaxed and call him sir if you can. And, and I just said, I'll oh, stuff that. So I called him, <laughs> I called him bro. I called him mate. Um, I was saying, Hey Jim, how's it going? Like, I, I, I don't know. I don't buy into that. Um, and obviously if someone's got something that they're focusing on and they need to, yeah, I'm not going to annoy them obviously because that's just professional. But as sure. far as putting them in a different state category, no, I'm not, I'm not up for that because I think that everyone is equal. And that's just my opinion. I've, and as I said, I've never really had any um, any problems with that. I totally um, agree. But it, it also allows you to be much more um, uh, equal when you're doing things like doing scenes with people like Sigourney Weaver. Sure. You just, you know, you, you, you're kind of like, yeah, she's just Sigourney. She's just a woman. She's that's just right. doing her job. You yeah. just bottled it up. And then when you get home, yep. you're like, oh, my God, you put on aliens. And you're like, yep. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, I, I do do that too. Just, <laughs> yeah. just for everyone's aware. Like I totally go home and go, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. Yep, yep. But in the moment, yeah, in the moment you're like, no, no, it's just no one. That's the, ki- that's the best acting you ever did was remaining calm yeah. in that situation. Top's Pretty much. Killing it. Pretty much. Yeah. Killing it. Um, yeah. So yeah, I guess from, from there, I, I, uh, after Avatar, um, I, I was doing, you know, some, I, I actually started to get into a bit of stunt work. Um, uh, cause I did a, yeah, I did a couple of, uh, like little things with Giovanni, um, where he wasn't around or it was like, we're going to have some smash glass here. And I knew all the stunt guys from rings and they were like, do you want to give it a go? And I'm like, yeah, sure, man. Absolutely. Uh, and so also I'd started studying martial arts, um, a few years earlier. So, Smart. um, yeah, I kind of was thinking if I know martial arts, I know gymnastics, I know dance, I'm acting. The next thing would be, you know, some sort of stunt stuff. And so. So yeah, and and that was that was really cool. And I, I've actually, um, in subsequent years, I, I I ended up going back to Weta in about 2010 uh, to work on the Hobbit um, because my wife and I, she was at at Weta, um, getting the, the main bread winning, uh, and then I was acting and running around. And then so when she got pregnant, it could no longer be me. Yep. Um, <laughs> so uh, uh, it, just running around and being um, at home doing nothing, yeah. which motherhood isn't, by the way. Motherhood is not sitting home no. doing nothing. They're keeping uh, the kid alive. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and so then I, I came back to Weta uh, uh, and started working on The Hobbit. Um, Dude. Uh, yeah. Tiny which little was, movie. Uh, <laughs> tiny little movie. Um, uh, which, was, um, which was, again, and now this was another scale of, of we had like one dwarf uh, and now we've got 13 dwarves. Yeah. Uh, and they're all on screen and super high def and then there's different scales everywhere and the armies are massive and, oh, man, The Hobbit was uh, – I think it was like three years of work for us, but that was a blur. Um, my my daughter was just born in 2010. Oh, man. Uh, and so I, I really wanted to be a part of her life. So I would, if the deadlines, which they were crazy, the deadlines were big, I would go home uh, and put her to bed and have bath time, and then I'd drive back to work and work till like midnight or two in the morning. There uh, you then, go. Super dad. Then come home, go to bed, sleep for four hours, go back into work and do the same thing. Because I... Used to those hours, used to hardly any sleep, and you know, and it was yeah, really Same. important to me and, and my wife. Yeah, that's the part they don't tell you about the dream job. <laughs> mm. Like, oh, you get to work on these movies. I was like, yeah, but you work on these movies. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you work, man. man. You, you totally work. Yeah, but it was um, the Hobbit was a great a great experience. Um, and we you know got to do cool stuff. And also, I ended up um in that time also doing some film and TV work as as an actor, but also as a stunt performer, purely as a stunt performer, nice. which was so much so much fun. I really really enjoyed it, and it it, it was um really great. Um, and a lot of the time in, in in New Zealand, they put stunt performers in front of the camera because they're orcs and they need to say a line and then get hit. And so, you know, there's, you know, the ability to kind of switch in between acting and stunting, uh, yeah. being a stunty, which is really cool. Um, and also got to do a lot of motion capture uh, performance on The Hobbit as well. What? Um, yeah, that was cool. Um, uh, and motion capture is so much fun. It's it's literally like um, improv comedy and pantomime. Yeah, um, you, you get the tights on. Of, yeah, tights on with all the little balls on it, and then you get you handed a, a stick with a, a, a thing on it, and it's like, that's a massive weapon, and you're like, okay. That's right. Um, Be an ant. Yeah. Go. <laughs> and they can put mats on the ground, so when you hit the ground, you hit a mat. You don't hit concrete. 
Oh, um, there you go. So, yeah, yeah. They moved up. Um, they did. <laughs> they were nice to us. Um, and, yeah, so so that that was really awesome and, and, and getting to play Creatures a lot, um, a lot there as well. And, and also my time away from when I wasn't working at Weta, uh, I, I, they pulled me in a few times uh, to do some creature work. Um, like there was a Wind in the Willows shoot um, that I was uh, pulled in to be the mole for. Uh, oh, which was cool. this massive suit um, and a heavy animatronic head, and that was really cool. And and um, and also, um, I did a, a couple of um, kids' TV shows where they had this this demonic bunny and a and an alien um, that I was uh, the guy inside the suit for, which was really cool, um, fun, uh, and also um, the fact that Weta would put me forward and that I'd get auditions, and they're like, yeah, yeah, this guy's great, and so that was really, really, really cool. Um, and, and again, always supportive. Richard would always put me forward, which is awesome. Um, yeah, and so that was kind of uh, Hobbit sort of finished up, um, uh, and then we just started doing all these other really cool stuff like Elysium and Dude, uh, and so you know and Chappie and and then like you Spectral on and all these. Yeah, man, that's so cool. Yeah, Dude, Chappie's um, great. Chappie is cool, <laughs> and a lot of those shows. I'm in. I'm in. I'm in the shop. Um, I was a mold, the mold room supervisor for quite a lot, so I'm I'm looking after the molds and making sure. And the molding process is quite important because you've got the prop uh, in its kind of master form and then you have to make a mold and deciding how the armature fits in. Is the gun coming apart? Uh, how is the sword going to be used? It's all, all in, integral into the mold. And so it's kind of like a pinch point in the workshop um, yeah. to figure those things out. Um, and then, a- again, they let me go away and, and do acting work and, and do stunt work, which was really, really cool. Um, and, then, and then I'd say... The big thing for me, because that was that was my 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 work for quite a few, you know three or four years. The big thing for me was when Krampus came along. Oh um, yeah, yeah. You're Krampus. I'm Krampus, dude. Uh, yeah. What, what was that audition? How did that go? So, that audition was really weird, and, and there was a lot of there's a few you know few of us in Wellington who are who are creature suit performers, and so I, I went into the audition, and, and and it was in a room, and it literally had a table that was uh, being the the fireplace. Oh, and then sweet. there was uh, off to the side, and then there was a, a, a production assistant who was just standing there, and and Michael, uh, the director, just said, "Okay, so see, we come out of the fireplace, and we've got a whole bunch of um, background stuff on it, which is really nice for the audition." And he says, "Okay, so you're coming out of the fireplace, and I just want you to come up, and then um, uh, that that person in front of you is is the, the grandmother from the scene." And I'm like, mm-hmm. "Oh, okay, cool." And so I just kind of come out of the fireplace, and and you know, and I'm I'm wearing, I think I'm wearing like. Uh, like a, a t-shirt and some some, some gym shorts um, and 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 bare feet and I'm coming out I'm like five foot nine the best <laughs> five foot eight and a half really Same. Um, and I'm <laughs> I'm crawling out of this this table and then I come up to this 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 production assistant and I just you know I've got my creature hands on and I kind of brush past her cheek and then um, pretended to lick the air because that was in the script there you go and it was just like you know and you just the greatest thing is you just go I look like an idiot but I don't care <laughs> I need to get this gig man you gotta commit um, <laughs> <laughs> and then and then yeah we did it we did another time uh, and, and you know Mike was really really great and he was just like yeah that's really cool and then yeah it, it was a really long period actually um, of when I was I auditioned to when I got cast and in fact, in the shop, I was working on different parts of the film. I wasn't actually working on the Krampus costume. Oh. And they kept going. Yeah, I was, I was working on, um, uh, at that stage, I was working on things like, um, uh, I can't remember, it was like a whole bunch of different things. All the elves, masks, and, right. and all, all the other, other stuff like that, and gingerbread men. And then, um, and then I started to work on um, the mask for the face. And then they were like, so we still don't know who's playing Krampus. Um, and then the casting director actually reached out to me and she said, look, just to let you know, we're just needing to set you, your contract to be finalized. And I thought the, go- the gig had completely gone. Sure. And I was like, oh, really? Oh, okay. That's it? Oh, I have a, I have a, I have a chance here. And then I went up to, to Rob, uh, the workshop supervisor, Rob Gillies, and was like, I think I'm Krampus. He's like, really? <laughs> okay, quick. Let's start getting you in this thing. And I'm like, oh, wait, wait, I haven't signed a contract. He's like, oh, well, we've got no one else. So we need to keep, we need to keep going. So. Here you go. And so then, yeah, uh, they started uh, fitting me with a suit, and then I started working on it. And then, um, uh, and then, yeah, they, I finally got cast, and then it was like all, all you know, Good thing. All, all ships ahoy. And, and then I had to wear, I had to wear these like um, these uh, stilts, uh, and so I started wearing the stilts whilst working around the shop, which was really there weird. There you go. <laughs> um, uh, to learn how to how, how to how to walk in them, um, but You're that that was really cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah, magic yeah. Krampus comes um, down from the chimney, licks the air, and then falls over onto Grandma. Don't want that. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. Mm-hmm. That that did happen on set. I, um, I, I, there was a scene where I um, I I was 
uh, crouching up and down on top of the roof, um, and then my I, I got a, I came back down to do a, a landing scene on blue screen, and um, the something went wrong with the rope or something like that, and I just uh, was in the wrong angle, and my I got a cramp. Cramp has got a cramp uh, in my <laughs> leg. You got a cramp. And I, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got a cramp in the ass, and then I hit the ground, uh, and then I, like, I just literally fell over like a dead horse, and I had to <laughs> try and find my leg and stretch it out under the blanket. Um, but that was a really hard shoot, I have to say. That was physically one of the most taxing things I've done. And I think it was because I was very – I was fit, but I wasn't training for it because I was so busy in the shop. Sure. Uh, and so uh, it was um, it was a difficult a difficult job. But the support crew I had of, of the stunt team – uh, Rodney Cook was the, the stunt coordinator on that, and this other um, awesome guy called Moo, uh, Wynnum Hannamond. He he um they were really really supportive of me and helped me along. And also Flo Foxworthy, who's our uh, one of our lead costumers here. She was looking after me on set, so they made this this shoot really really um a lot more enjoyable, uh, a lot more fun than it could have been. Sure. Um, could you? But see? it was it was. Could I see in it? Yeah. Um, I essentially had an iPhone in the front of the in front of my hand. So my, the neck is all done by puppeteering. Of one one hand is in the neck, and then one hand is uh, in the other hand, oh. uh, like the left or the right hand. And then the right or left hand. So I've got one hand in the head, like puppeteering like it. A the other Skeksis. hand is um, Skeksis, yes. Uh, and then I've got a little camera with an iPhone, uh, essentially that I can see the world through. Uh, and then my other hand is is performing, you know, finger extensions in, in one hand. The other side is either a dummy hand where it's a dead hand, uh-huh. uh, and we just whichever was off of camera. But then in some scenes where there needed to be two hands, uh, a, a girl, Kate Venables or Tan, would be inside it with me. Oh, um, yeah. So there were two people inside the Krampus costume in the scene where uh, the fireplace, the uh, the fight when you know Krampus is coming out of the fireplace. Uh-huh. I'm doing the head in one hand, and then Kate is doing the other hand. Oh, that's and then, cool. Yeah, and then so we'd come out together, and that was really hard. Like we were so low to the ground to get those horns out, and yeah, Pilates you know, coming out our ass. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, and then when I'm walking towards the the grandmother, um, Kate is actually. Uh, she's a ballet dancer, and she is, is literally doing a, a ballet move as I'm moving. She's teeter-tottering around my hoof oh. as I'm slamming it down on the ground. Oh, it was so scary. Every time I slammed, because the walk is really bang and slam, every time I walked, I was so sure I was going to crush her foot. Oh, and so she's yeah. she's inside there, pressed right up against the side of me with her hand in, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the suit and then my other hand in the head. Oh, it was, yeah. Um, you, you get very, very um, familiar with people yeah. <laughs> uh, in that situation, uh, and and yeah, so yeah, it was. Um, but it was so much fun, and that's the great thing is you work with people like that, and it is really fun, and and you, you know, and you you get people back, and like Kate and Tan and this other girl Imogen were all all inside the suit with me at some stage, uh, and, and it's just so much fun, and you just you throw the whole um, uh, like. Uh, I was civility out the window and you just start making jokes about farting and, yep, you know, and you. Who, who's touching <laughs> what where and things like that. You yeah. know, it's just, otherwise it just gets too um, uncomfortable. Oh, you got to um, break the ice somehow. <laughs> yeah. There were no ice in there, man. It's super hot. <laughs> Is it super hot? I was, that was my next question. Oh, I, dude, I, I just posted an old photo on Instagram uh, of, um, of me and Kate after doing that scene and, and there is sweat just pissing off us. Oh, we are man. just so wet. Um, uh, and, and it's so hot in there. Like it was the hottest suit I think I've done. Um, uh, and it was, uh, yeah, it was like 40, oh, uh, 91 pounds, uh, that Whoa. suit weighed and most of it's all cloth. Um, oh, no. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, but it was such a cool, uh, such a cool project and such a cool film, like such awesome homage and throwbacks to gremlins and all those things. Yes. Um, for sure. yeah. yeah, man, no, it was super cool. That's awesome. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, and then, um, you know, uh, from there it was just, um, more stunts, more acting and, and working on more cool films. And I, I got to, um, uh, uh, the, the workshop where the workshop started to get a bit bigger. And so we started to create some, um, project uh, supervisors who were within the workshop who would carry individual projects. And so um, cool. I was um, brought on as a project supervisor uh, at Weta um, for Power Rangers, yeah. um, which was, yeah, yeah, which is the next big thing that I kind of was involved with. And that, that, those costumes, um, really, were pre- cool. really cool and really technically difficult. Oh, I bet. Um, yeah. Clear crystal armor that has to do uh, martial arts is not the best brief to get. 
I bet. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to supervising, Luke. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, and uh, yeah, it was um, it was an amazing, uh, amazing job. It was such such cool stuff. And like yeah, again, you know, throwbacks to nineties and and childhood, like Power Rangers. You know, whenever I wanted to watch some some awesome fight scenes, you know, turn on Power Rangers and, and watch that stuff. Same. Um, and yeah, and and then to, to the, the design was so difficult and so um hard to pull off um but again through collaborating with all the other people in the shop uh and and working with some some amazing um uh, technicians and artists we were able to to create some pretty cool stuff um which i'm was super uh, super happy with the way it came out and then going on set with the crew um like the cast was so cool that's Dacon cool Montgomery and Naomi. yeah no oh totally man uh, and that's that thing of of of, of breaking down those those barriers um like i met becky g uh oh, and, and 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 she was she was like you know she's got an attitude but like in all the best ways like she's she's a little little firecracker you know and and i just got on with her really really well um and and such fun to work with and she she has a little bit of um uh she had a little bit of like uh, i don't want to say claustrophobia but she was a little bit anxious about wearing the helmets being so tight sure but man she was such a trooper and she just she just pushed through um and and then also the other one like Dacre Montgomery, man, that guy works hard. For real. I, I don't. I've not actually met a guy who I think would would uh, an actor who's worked as hard as that. Potentially Vigo Mortensen, but um, but yeah, da- Dacre That's is fair. yeah yeah Dacre's <laughs> Dacre's a man, and he's in he's a, actually he's not an Australian, he's a Kiwi. Oh, he what? Was, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's born in um Auckland and he grew up in Perth in Australia. He's kind of like me. I was about um, to say you got that going on. Yeah, man. Uh, and so, uh, so yeah, I, I, I'm going to claim him as a Kiwi because uh, he's, he's the man. Who's yeah, his rugby he's team? The man. You know, <laughs> oh, that's what we no. need. <laughs> I'm going to have to ask him. He's going to you know? have the same conundrum. <laughs> <laughs> he's the only other person who knows how you feel. <laughs> I know. I know. Me and Dacre, eh? <laughs> right. We'll reach out to him. We'll, st- we'll, yeah, st- we'll but- start a group. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, the Australian New Zealand rugby supporters. That's right. The, the in-betweeners. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone else will call us the traitors. That's right. That's right. Regardless of where you go, you can't win here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. man. And he's, I yeah. mean, he was incredible in Stranger Things. Oh, uh, I, I watched incredible. that just recently, and I was just like, man, Dacre. Oh, like, it was so good to see his passion and his drive in Power Rangers. Um, and he, as I said, he was so committed, but then just seeing his range, uh, in stranger things and what he was uh, able to do, um, yeah. it's just, dude, he became like, oh, it's so awesome. He's, he's created an iconic character. Um, and I mean, it sucks that he's dead now, I know. Um, <laughs> but, um, but who knows, you know, the, the, the upside down might be able to, 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 to pull something out. That's true. Um, yeah. That um, but true. yeah, no, I, I'm, I'm, I, I don't want to say it cause I was, the, it was the first film. Power Rangers was the first big film he worked on, but I'm super proud of him. Um, Good. Like he he pushed himself really hard, and it shows uh, he's he's a, he's a guy who I and I really really like his work ethic. Very similar to mine of just get the job done, be be you know collaborative and be be a kind person. So yeah, absolutely. Hats off to him. And Netflix mm. is killing it. Speaking Netflix. of Netflix, yes. Oh, it's like I'm good at segues or something. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you learn a thing or two. Dude, I Am Mother mm. is awesome. And speaking of mothers being a hard job, you know from experience <laughs> in a certain way. Yes. You were, yes. You were mother and I am mother. I was, uh, yes, I was, I am, I was mother and I am mother. Um, and I was inside the suit. Uh, yes. In, in, in the whole, whole of the entirety on, show, on, the, on the set. Uh, and, and I, yeah, I, I not her voice, That's uh, true. as you can hear. <laughs> um, but, uh, <laughs> I mean, but, you're not um, really trying right now. I'm not saying no, that you couldn't no. do it. Rose, well, I, Rose Byrne is Australian. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm I saying. I know. I know. <laughs> well, in fact, it's funny it, it, because it's an Australian film and it's an Australian finance film. Uh, they they were like, I, I, I got cast, uh, and then one of the producers is like, Yay! This is awesome. It's going to help us with our tax uh, tax breaks that we've got. Uh, you know, Australian as a cast member, and I'm like, Actually, I'm a Kiwi. Yeah. <laughs> and he was like, It what? came back to you. <laughs> Yeah. Um, you can't win. Uh, no, no, I know. It keeps it, everyone thinks I'm Australian. That's right. Um, I don't know why. But, uh, weird. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie. Um, but the uh, the the I did actually have to do a voice on set um, of being uh, a sort of an effeminate uh, Siri. Like yeah, a professional. I, well, I wasn't gonna be a Kiwi in front of um, Clara, who yeah, who, um, who is a Danish uh, actress. 
uh, and 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 she uh, she probably <laughs> would have been a bit thrown if it was like you know daughter. You yeah. can't go to the airlock. Yeah. Oh, it's not safe outside. Um, <laughs> uh, so, uh, yeah, I, uh, I, I, I changed my voice up a bit, uh, put on a bit of an American accent, um, and, uh, you know, which I'm not going to do now. Uh, that's fair. <laughs> I won't do my the, Kiwi accent. So. Okay. <laughs> deal, deal. Yeah, okay. uh, it's an agreement. <laughs> yeah, th- there is, a, there is a, a, a version out there where my voice is on it. Uh, oh, and sweet. also I did some, uh, some actual extra lines when they were submitting it to some, um, to some uh, 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 what's the word, uh, to some festivals. Uh, and I, I had to had um, my actual voice on it, so they, they were thinking. And a lot of the time, apparently, they didn't get a lot of feedback, like a lot of bad feedback about it. Um, hey. uh, so I guess it was just people just take it for what it is. Yeah. Um, I like but it. in one of those in one of those edits, uh, there is, and in fact, you see it if you look up Thin Design, you can see some of the amazing VFX work that Thin Design did on the film. Oh, cool. Um, there. In that edit, there is a scene where mother's jumping out of the uh, the, the chair to run to the daughter at the airlock. Yes. Um, now, that isn't me on the suit. Okay. Um, that would have been – that the suit weighed 91 pounds again. Oh. Uh, and, and I was wearing heels, oh, uh, like perfect. aluminium heels. Yeah, so – Step it up. Uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> Doing a 91-pound suit run in heels in a semi-blind robot was never going to look good, oh. but also was going to be really dangerous. Um, so I, um, I ended up doing that run in my undies. Uh, because the stunt suit, the, the blue foam stunt suit was on set uh, being used somewhere else. So I did, uh, there is a scene uh, in that, that cut where it's, a, it's me doing the mother voice and also running around in my underpants uh, the around dream. the set. That's the dream. The dream. <laughs> that's the dream. That's, that's the, uh, that's the uh, other rated uh, version of that's I right. Mother. That's right, which yeah. you have to find. It's also buried next to it's Black Spot. <laughs> next to Black Spot, that's right, deep, deep down. Deep, um, deep. But if you find yes. it, you learned it. Yeah. <laughs> yes, you did. You've earned it. Well done. There's your Easter egg. Yeah. <laughs> um, but anyway, we should go back to how how it all happened. I guess. Yes. Um, what was that audition like? That audition was um, was a lot easier than the Krampus one, actually. You had um, to because fight I, uh, sorry. You had to physically fight for it. I, I physically fought for it. That's yes. What, um, I knew it. I could tell. <laughs> <laughs> um, the the mother one came about. I was um, brought on board uh, for I Am Mother as a project supervisor. Uh, so I was, I was, um, you know, everyone's like, well, Krampus, you did Krampus and, and on, on Power Rangers, um, also being a stunt performer and, you know, uh, working with those guys, I, I kind of have an understanding of being inside a suit and being a, uh, a performer. Mm-hmm. Uh, so for I Am Mother, it was, um, uh, Grant, uh, you know, was introduced to me as like, this is the guy, Luke, who's going to be project supervisor. He was also Krampus. Uh, and he's like, oh, okay, cool. Uh, and so then we just started uh, talking through the design and looking at the design um, with Grant um, and uh, with Christian Pierce, who did the the concept design for it, and just starting to talk about it. And and look for your for your uh, listeners out there, a, a robot suit, a practical robot suit in this day and age uh, as a central character, is shit scary. Yeah. Uh, for a costume, <laughs> like I, bet. I remember getting uh, getting the, the the brief for it, and I was just like, Are you serious? They want to do this? <laughs> Like Ow. that, that is, that is insane. <laughs> yeah. Like, uh, for, for a full film, like if you think about the films that have done that in the past, you've got C-3PO, you've got Robocop, uh, and you've got, um, uh, Bicentennial Man. Yep. And th- those are really the only ones. Uh, uh, and there's, there's a film called Robot and Frank, which did it quite, which was quite, quite cute. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's a different type of film. You know, we're talking of this, this genre kind of fanboy kind of high sci-fi era um, yeah. type of filmmaking. Um, and so I was very, very uh, uh, skeptical. But, you know, we're where to workshop. I've got an amazing team. I'm, I'm sure we're going to be able uh, to, to pull something out of the bag. And we talked about some VFX augmentation on the suit initially um, uh, about, you know, potentially removing the waist or dropping uh, the neck out or stuff like that. Sure. Um, but talking to VFX guys very much um, – and what I've learned through now doing um, 3D modeling a lot in my, in my last few years is that if you're going to replace one thing, it's almost easier to replace everything. Um, Makes sense. And so, yeah, it's all about mapping and things to do with, uh, you know, stuff to do with 3D stuff, which I can explain, but it's, you know, potentially not that interesting. <laughs> um, <laughs> unless you're into 3D VFX and I've just offended everyone who's into VFX, so I'm very, very sorry. Um, <laughs> Welcome to the show. <laughs> um, 
but uh, but so we were going, okay, we want to try and do the suit as much practically as possible. Mm-hmm. Um, and so uh, we also, I was very keen on, on casting a female performer uh, because I thought that you've got an all-female cast uh, and I thought it would work yeah. really well to have a female performer inside the suit. Um, and so we started, and, and for me, once the concept design was starting to get to its maturity, and it was a long design process, it was about a year of concept design. Wow. Um, yeah, and that was really just to do with, um, I think, timing of when the shoot was going to happen, but also just trying to find that iconic character. Sure. Um, and we started to audition some people, and, and we auditioned a, a few, you know, we, we also said this person had to be a Wellington uh, or New Zealand, preferably, if not Australian, um, uh, or, or both, no. Uh, uh, <laughs> or neither, uh, <laughs> apparently. <laughs> Somewhere in the middle of the sea. Yeah. Um, and, so it's just uh, you and Decree as well yourself. Yeah. Right now. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, and so we said just for because the suit was going to be so tight fitting and needed so many fittings and, and figuring that out, it needed to be someone based in either you know New Zealand um, or Australia or uh, and, and Wellington preferably. So we Makes started um, looking at, at casting, and, and so we, well, they started to auditioning people, and they had Australian auditions and casting some people in New Zealand, put some people forward. Um, and then we, we looked at um, the body shape um, of a female performer uh, and, and then also versus a male performer. And I kind of – one of the things that we first do when any, any sort of suit work, uh, if the person's height's going to change, is you figure out the character height in the world. Uh, and so that was very much based on who was going to play daughter – and who was and, and what height they wanted mother to be. Makes sense. Um, and so when it was looking like Clara was going to be um, cast, um, she's 1.7, so that's like 5.6 or 5.7. No, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to do things in my head. About 5, yeah, 5.7 um, tall. Um, that puts her in a space where the person inside the suit who's wearing heels and has got a bit of a head extension is around 5.6 to 5.9. Right. Um, and then with the body shape, it also needed to be um, a, a male. And, and that's to do with hip uh, to waist to shoulder ratio. Right. Uh, and a lot of the, the tests that we'd done on some females, it ended up looking a bit hippy, um, and, uh, which, um, you know, it, it kind of then meant, well, it needed to be a, 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 a male form or, or this type of, you know, form of a, a, a very slight waist and wider shoulders. Right. Um, which then uh, moved it to... Basically, someone who was about five eight, five nine, who could act, was a stunt performer and a creature performer, uh, and was based in Wellington. I know a guy. <laughs> and yeah, yeah. <laughs> so there's a guy uh, who we know. Um, but that that said, I still did audition. Like it's, I, I don't want to say I got, I got a uh, you know a, a free card. I did audition. Sure. Uh, and 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 um and and gave it a, a pretty good go. And and, and I think. I think Graham was the one who, and, and Liz Mullane, who was casting it, who pressured me to audition. And I actually didn't want to audition. I was like, no, my, my role of making this thing is a bit too big. Right. Um, like, I kind of want to focus. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I kind of want to, I don't want to be inside her. Yeah. Um, She's already inside me. God. <laughs> yeah, she's in my head. Yeah. Um, I, I, I was kind of wanting to focus on that. And so I, I kind of did sort of go, you know, let's, let's, um, let's see how we, how, uh, how we go with other auditioning. And then it kind of came back and then I, I finally was like, yeah, no, I'll put a tape down. And Liz said, why don't you just put a tape down just so Grant can have a look. Uh, and I did an audition uh, and, and then that was it. Grant was like, no, no, he's the man. Um, got it. Uh, yeah, got it. So, um, so that was it, um, which was really great for me in a supervisor role because I'm like, wicked, I know who the cast member is. Uh, and I can start building it because the silhouette and kind of the shape is all based off of the performer. Sure. You know, all the bits have to be built off of that person's shape. Uh, and then after that, it was like also wicked because now I know the performer and he is going to get whatever the hell he's given <laughs> by the <That's> supervisor. <laughs> I can make all the decisions for him, That's um, right. which was which was a really, really actually advantageous thing. Uh, and also all the fittings were done in-house uh, with, with Weta. So we could print something on the, the, the fast uh, printers and 3D printers in-house and then just try them on and go, yep, that fits. Let's make it. Um, and, yeah, it was a, it was a really, really um, a smart decision, especially for something like iMother, which had such a small budget um, comparatively. Sure. Uh, yeah. And so so moving forward, it was like, Great, this is awesome. Um, and we, we uh, you know, uh, we started doing um, some uh, what we call black foam mock-ups, which is really like a really kind of cosplay kind of shape. 
mm -hmm. uh, to start kind of getting the, the base shapes for it. And in that, I was then starting to um, look at the, the way she'd walk and the way she'd move and stuff. Um, and it was a very, very weird two-hat kind of pronged thing where when I was inside the thing, I couldn't see how I looked, but I really wanted to. And I had to, to really trust um, Catherine Jackson, who was a production manager on it, uh, really trust what she was doing when I was inside the, the suit at different times that she was, you know, gathering the right information. And, and again, it came to this whole kind of uh, working together, which was so, so cool to have the team support me in every way possible. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was, it was really cool. So um, how, how did you see out of it then? So how I, how I saw out of it, like the, 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 the final, that was one of the things that was a really hard thing to, to get um, was we, we, I wanted to have direct uh, feed, like light feed. So like a, a periscope or a mirror or something like that, because direct light is always, it doesn't have any latency as opposed to a camera right. um, or technical issues or batteries or things like that. Um, and so I tried a few different things and they didn't work. So we, I ended up going, well, what about some VR goggles? Because this thing is really, like Krampus was really big. Uh, and so I was thinking maybe some goggles I could put on there. Um, but because I knew of all the things like handling live babies and syringes and yeah. uh, things like that, I wanted to be able to see really well. Um, so I thought, um, some, some actual like stereoscopic, uh, goggles would be good. And I was thinking, oh, like Google glass, Google glass would be, or not Google glass, the, you know, Google kind of VR sort of Google uh, cardboard stuff. Yeah. But then it was like, but I don't want to see augmented reality and I don't want to see VR. I literally want to see something that's only about three inches away from my face. Good point. Which the, the technology for that's not really around. Sure, yeah. Because <laughs> if you want to see three inches in front of your face, you just look. You just look, um, yeah. <laughs> Figure it out, Luke. <laughs> yeah, and I'm like, what are we going to do here? So I started trying to make these, like, I got webcam sort of cameras and trying to then interpolate those into a, a, a smartphone and da 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 And I was going, how are we going to do this? How are we going to do this? And we're also, where do we're developing? We're working with Magic Leap uh, doing the oh, Dr. Cool. Cool game. Um, yeah, which is super cool. And I'm thinking maybe we could talk to those guys about technology. I went in there and I had this group of these, you know, imaginarian guys and who are thinking of, you know, future tech and stuff. I was like, how am I going to do this guys? What do you guys suggest? What do you think we can do? And one guy just said, what about drone racing glasses and drone racing goggles? And I was like, Oh, oh, oh that's good. That makes sense. That's real so good. yeah, we, yeah, we got some drone racing goggles and some drone racing uh, cameras, uh, which are stereoscopic. And basically hid them inside the face behind the black sort of central uh, piece. Oh, that's um, cool. Yeah, and then and then within that, I added an extra couple of lenses because it's a see-through sort of thing, uh, just dummy sort of lenses mm -hmm. that ended up making it look like that was just her her readout um, sort of thing. If you've got that close, because the other thing about this suit is is that it wasn't like a a suit that's kind of Krampus kind of comes in and out of the film, um, or the Predator's kind of in it for a while you know, and, and, and sneaks around an alien, they're kind of half in and half out. This thing, Mother, is in like 90% of the scenes. The whole time. Um, the whole time. And yeah. she's seen top to bottom. So all of those considerations had to be made um, uh, and, and thought about of how, how are we going to be able to shoot everywhere on this thing? Yeah, um, can't take shortcuts. And the no, you couldn't take shortcuts. And the detail, the amount of detail on this thing was just insane. Um, and in fact, like... When we're getting ready to deliver, uh, we're running out of time and money, as you always do. Of course. Uh, and on the backpack, we needed to add, like, all this interesting mix and kind of, like, servos and kind of cool fan stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, and we, we ripped a whole bunch of um, hard drives out of some old computers that oh, we were going to... We, yeah, which is awesome. They look super cool and they look super techy and they're, like, shiny and stuff. And we were going to mold and cast them and paint them. But we didn't have enough time. So we just chucked the hard drives in the backpack, oh, which pr sweet. probably ended up being like about 10 or 12 pounds extra. <laughs> <laughs> you got to earn it. <laughs> you got to earn it. I know you got to work for it. Um, and, uh, and in fact, it's funny because I kept saying, oh man, this thing just keeps getting heavy. There's more weight and there's more weight in it. And I didn't end up packing a suit before it left. And when I ended up, we, we, um, before I left to shoot in Australia, um, I opened up the packaging and inside it, these these asshole mates of mine at Weta had put uh, tape inside the whole suit saying more weight, more weight, like all these stickers <laughs> saying more weight inside it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it was, it was pretty you, funny. Did you fall? Did you ever fall? No, I, wow. I very, I had to not fall actually. And that That's was uh, in every suit, uh, yeah, every suit you try on, every costume you try on, you got to say, now how am I going to fall on this thing? Right. Um, Just in case. And 
just in case. And so you sort of try it on and you might give it a bit of a roll. With Mother, with Krampus, I knew I was going to go to the side. With the mole, it was all made out of foam. I just do that. And orcs, and you just hit the ground. It's fine. Sure. But in Mother, I kind of scot in it and I went, I can't go sideways because my arms are bolted in and they're on like bearings, like sure. blue bearings. You ain't lifted uh, up. I, I can't put my hands out because my my wrists are bolted in as well and they'll just get sheared and broken. I can't go backwards because it's an – like basically I had nowhere to fall. So what I did and what I said to Tim DeMet, who was a, the supervisor on set who was looking after me, I just said, well, I just won't fall then. And he went, good. <laughs> Fair enough. You know, that's a good point. And that, that, that was the ethos was just don't fall because there's only one suit and Ooh, there's only one Luke. What? Yeah. Yeah, Bold. I know. On, only one suit. Yeah. Man, good um, thing you were the supervisor. <laughs> so, well, you, so if you fell, yeah. you'd have to ream yourself out. <laughs> yeah, I'd have to tell myself, why did you fall, Luke? Yeah. You ruined my work. Yeah. The other thing is I kept blaming the guy who built it as well. Like <laughs> I'd say on set, they'd be like, why? so this can't happen. I'm like, oh, wetter. Yeah. Where does stuff to me again, man? Always. <laughs> God, I told them I needed to fall, and they said, don't. Now what am I going to mm. do? <laughs> yeah, why don't you not fall, man? Yeah, let's see you try that. Oh, wait, you can't because you're not exactly my size. Yeah. Uh, I guess I'll do it yeah. and not fall. Yeah. <laughs> How long did it take yeah. to suit up? Uh, it took 45 minutes wow. uh, to suit up, um, which is not so bad. Not terrible. Um, not terrible, um, but with the shooting schedule, and it took takes about 30 minutes to take it off. And um, with the shooting schedule, I was on 33 out of 34 days of shooting. Nice. Uh, and so I was in it from 6 in the morning till like 7 at night. Um, so bathroom I was, about was to a ask. bit of a problem. Yeah. Yeah. Bathroom's a bit of a problem. So I going number twos you is a, a bag full... bag into mother. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we need a diaper change. Mother's you know... crap herself. Um... <laughs> if you need big ideas, I got you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, uh, it's a full derig, full full reset, full takeoff, and I only That's I better. only did that once. I only did that once where I had to do a full full derig. Um, like a and I had like a professional. Yes, <laughs> I, I I'd have a coffee and a bit of a run every morning, uh, and then go. Okay, cool. Let's get in the suit, and I'd usually be fine. Um, and I was on a bit of a crazy diet because um, I got I got slimmed up for the for the job and and worked my worked out. Mm-hmm. for six months straight and I didn't drink alcohol and, and you know, was was really quite cool. health conscious because I knew I was going to be, be pretty much being performing as an, uh, you know, as an athlete for six weeks. Sure. Um, uh, so yeah, number, number twos was a, just a, that's it. Um, but number ones, um, uh, I could take one arm off, uh, and there's a strap that we could undo and then a zip. Um, but the hardest part was getting, um, getting the bits out, <laughs> <laughs> if you know what I mean, uh, to go, and then I'm blind as to what's happening. I'm hopefully just, you know, going, oh, yep, yep, there's, 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 there's where I'm aiming for. Yeah. But then Listening. the next, the worst part is getting it back in. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then and then I had to get zipped up by Zoilo, who's one of the supports. Uh, um, yeah, it was, yeah. Real but, close. I mean, that's the job, you know. That's you, right. you sign up for that, that's what you're going to get. That's the real reason I didn't want to audition is because I was like, I don't want to be doing this stuff again. <laughs> Everyone's looking at my tackle. Uh, um. <laughs> you you put a screen just in case. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little screen. I turned yeah. the screen inside. It's I changed dials. It's like, curtain. okay, guys. <laughs> but but then I can change my camera inside. I can go to bathroom cam. They, so I boom. can see. <laughs> you know what? It's hindsight's twenty twenty, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. I know. I know. I know. Um but yeah, that, that was that was my my journey for six weeks. But I have to tell you, it was it was the best experience in my life. Like I I think that I am mother. Um, Lord of the Rings, as we said, was is an amazing experience, and it's 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 a blur, and it's days and days of amazing stuff and creativity and wonderful people. But shooting I am mother was um was so awesome. Uh, such a wonderful experience with, with the director Grant. Like he, he basically said to me, like you know, being a creature suit performer and being a stunt performer, you're often just told jump out, roar, hit the ground. Sure. Um, but he, he just said it's your character. You that's own it. That's cool. Yeah. And you're um, there beginning to end in the development too, so it's got to uh, be real special. Super special. And and look, I've got to say, building the suit was one of the hardest things I've ever done. One of the most stressful things I've ever done. Sure. Um, just such amount of tech, such amount of um, just time frames and all those things, uh, and just such a challenge. But 
um, the payoff for what it looked like at the end, but also then going on set to have such an amazing creative experience with Grant as the as the director, and then Clara and Hillary, just oh my god, was it cool <sighs> telling Hillary Swank she can just die? <laughs> uh, yes, uh, and, and 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 intimidating again, and that's that where the story's I coming bet. back uh, with Sigourney <laughs> Weaver. Um, so Sigourney Weaver is one of my favorite actors of all time, and then Good pick. and then we we learnt on set Clara and I. Uh, that Hillary, we didn't know who was going to play woman until about a week before Hillary turned up. Oh, um, nice. So then, then she turns up, and we're like, "Oh, it's Hillary Swank." And I'm and, and Clara's. This is one of her first uh, big gigs. Sure. She's like going, "Oh my god, Hillary! Oh my god!" I'm like, "No, no, they're just a person. That you know, it's all good. You know, she'll bring her own uh, take to it, and she's going to have years of experience. You know, don't worry about it." And then I went back to my hotel room, like, "Oh my god, it's Hillary Swank! Oh my god, it's Hillary Swank!" <laughs> Um, right. <laughs> uh, uh, but um, but yeah, she turned up and and just you know, it's Hillary Swank. What do you say? A, a, a absolute professional, amazing um, eye for drama and conflict and figuring out the scene, uh, and then uh, going to do the scenes. And I, look, you know, I'm I'm a I'm a dude in a suit pretending to be a woman robot um, <laughs> on set with Hillary Swank. There's this real big fear in the back of my mind that I'm like, is she just gonna like you know we get on set and I'm like. Hello, hello. I'm Mother, and she's just going to look at me and go, turn to, to, to Grant and say, "What the hell is this? <laughs> yeah, like, I'm not going to work nope. with this." <laughs> Are you serious? Yeah. yeah. So I had that like playing on my mind, really, really uh, uh, scared that that was going to happen. But the exact opposite happened. She um she was really, really supportive, and also really um I think uh, she she got into the tune because Clara and I had been working together, and Clara regard. I mean. This this girl and this woman is is uh, I, I'd count her as um one of my my close friends now, uh, and and she she's just a dream, uh, she's and amazing. and so talented oh so yeah. talented, and so much fun to work with um and so professional and generous um yeah I, I couldn't have wished for a a better a better person and she was going to make it really difficult or really hard the person who was playing daughter, and she made it just so fun and so awesome and so wonderful and such good good drama going into the camera um and i, I couldn't have hoped for I, I call her uh the sarah to my ludo like there you uh, go. For, for labyrinth like it, it. you know yeah uh it, it was so so cool and then and then working with hillary um uh was was intimidating but i would i would always wear my head uh, no matter if i was on or off camera with clara so if i'm off camera i'm not wearing i'm still wearing the head because i wanted to make sure the character was had its you know Sure. Uh, it's through line and make sure that she was getting the same performance. But with Hillary, I did a couple of rehearsals with my, with my helmet off, with the head off. Ooh, and, um, and she, it was, I was just the rehearsals cause we were getting ready to figure out the scene and blocking the scenes out. Mm -hmm. And then when I went, Oh, I'll put the head on now to Hillary. She's like, no, nope, leave it off. And I'm like, what? Oh. She's like, I want to look lock eyes with you. Uh -oh. I want it. And I was like, <laughs> Oh, oh shit! Yeah. Um, but uh, uh, and, and then that person, scene, just a person, <laughs> just a person, just a person. Yeah. Uh, oh, uh, I'm gonna need a toilet change. Um, don't cry, don't cry, <laughs> boys, don't cry, boys, don't cry. Oh, oh, uh, Oscar. Uh, and then um, she, uh, it basically, I just, you know, that the scene where I'm telling her to leave and, and doing those scenes is all with my head off, and it was, it was awesome. It was so much fun. And just such good, good, good drama. And I just, you know, it, it's it's so amazing to watch someone like her work, yeah. where she just she does the rehearsals, she figures her stuff out, and then they roll camera and just magic. Like I, I don't use that term lightly. Magic happens. Dude, um, yeah. Talk about a masterclass, yeah. huh? I reckon. Man, I reckon. That's yeah. so cool. So, having done all these amazing things, what advice would you give to somebody who wants to get into that kind of work? Um. I think I think the thing, uh, and I, I guess it's a, what you want to do and how, and how you want to work, and and I, it it always is a struggle between uh, the dream and the reality. Right. Like the dream of being an, and I, I've said this to a lot of actors, and I I don't class myself as an actor anymore. I class myself as a performer and a maker nice. uh, and an onset technician. Um, if you're the hardest part about being an actor isn't acting isn't learning your lines, isn't doing the drama. That's the easy part. Yep. The hardest part about being an actor is being an actor, doing the auditions, dealing with not having stable relationships because of what's going on, what part of the world are you going to work in, uh, you know, how are you going to interpret the scene, um, why you got 
uh, you missed out on a role purely because you've got a different hair color. Um, you know, those, those things are really hard to eat. And so if you're wanting to be an actor, you, you really have to, um, you really have to believe in yourself, but also have an amazing support network of people who will be honest with you. Yep. Uh, and also be, be thankful for what you get because making a career as an actor at all, uh, is, is really important and being generous and thankful for no matter what opportunity you have. I, I I've worked with many different people in many different industries, I'm still really thankful to have a job because someone has decided to give give you money to do something that their their film potentially will hinge on its failure or its successes. Right. Um, and so always being generous and thankful and kind um, because also if you're a little bit shit uh, <laughs> at, at your job yep. and you kind of end up not hitting that mark or hitting that line or, or, or missing missing a certain key thing, if you're a nice person, people will be able to come up to you and say, and if you're approachable and say, hey, I think you just kind of missed that that line or you're not really delivering what I need. Um, whereas if you're too standoffish and you're too on your own high horse, you, you're not going to get that feedback and you're, never, you're, gonna, you're gonna work in a bubble mm -hmm. and you're never gonna know when it is you need a bit of a bit of a readjust. It's true, um, if you're a dick, nobody yeah. wants to work with you. Well, yeah, pretty much. You've yep. summed up that long <laughs> soliloquy so well. Uh, and uh, but but yeah, that, that's kind of how I would put it. But and also just put yourself out there. Have a go at everything. Because you know, I mean, I, I would never have known I liked being a creature performer and liked being doing stunts and that if I had never gone to do work at Weta and work on Lord of the Rings and get chucked in orc costumes. Because it would have been like, no, acting's what I want. No, acting's what I want. I want to be on, you know, on on this TV show or I want to be in these movies. I actually find acting with my face a bit, a bit intimidating now. I like being covered up and being cool creatures, or at least being really horrible people. Like that's, <laughs> I, mean, I get such a kick out of it. Um, and so you never know what's going to happen. Uh, and so don't, you know, have a goal, have a journey, but allow allow your goals to change, and also allow. I had to say to myself when I was about twenty, oh, probably about thirty, I had to apologise to the twelve to thirteen year old Luke, which is you're not going to be a Hollywood actor. 12 or 13 year old Luke, you're going to be a character actor. You're going to be a creature performer. You're going to be a stunt performer. Get over it. There I'm really go. sorry, but it's not going to happen. And that was so uh, uh, um, freeing. I was like, yep, cool. Absolutely. Now, let's move on. And in a lot of yeah. ways, it's better. I've talked to a lot of people uh, who were creature performers on like all the new Star Wars movies and stuff. And mm. so far, the record's clear that creature performers and stunt people are pretty much my favorite kind of people. So. <laughs> I mean, it worked out. It worked out. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah. I mean, and and like, I think, I think. Um, uh, act, don't get me wrong. Some of the actors are my favorite people: Clara Ruga, Dacre Montgomery, yeah. um, Jed Brophy. Now, I have to shout out to Jed Brophy. Jed Brophy, who um, is a lot of performance in a lot of Peter's films, and an actor, and, and he he's someone who I um is a mentor to me and an idol. I, I put him right up on a pedestal. And if you've, anyone's ever worked with Jed, they'll know he, he is everything I'm saying is pretty much just regurgitating what Jed's done. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. He, he, he was a writer. He was a stunt performer uh, and he's an actor and he's, he's, he's the man. I, love I agree. Him. I totally agree. Mm. Can you believe we've been talking for almost mm. twice? <laughs> Holy sh <laughs> shit. Sorry, yes. man. No, this is what I'm talking about. I'm sorry if you didn't have that time. <laughs> you have too many oh, cool no, stories. Oh, no, I didn't. Uh, uh, I'll well, have my people know. call your people. Yeah. Um, <laughs> this, okay, dude, this was super fun. I had a really good time. I hope you did as well. Yeah, me too. Um, me too. Oh no, I had an awesome time, man. It was great. Good, good. So before we wrap this thing up, I have to ask, where can people find you online? Well, if you go uh, to Instagram uh, and look at uh, Luke dot underscore dot Hawker, uh, that's where you will find me. Um, there's a little picture of mother there. Uh, and then um, I also uh, uh, am on uh, Facebook. Uh, if you look at uh, Luke Hawker, you'll find me there as well. Love it. Dude, this was super mm. fun. And, uh, you know, you're doing cool stuff later on. If you want to talk about it, I got gotcha, you, man. For sure, man. I'll be happy to come back anytime. In fact, there's this little film called Black Spot. No, just kidding. Black Spot. Um, yes, <laughs> I've heard of this. You know what? Next big thing. That's what I'm told. Hard to find. Oh, but if yeah. you do... You're in. Yep. Sure. <laughs> Sweet. Oh, dude. Until next time, man.
Hello, friends. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of The Interesting Podcast. If you'd like to follow the show, it is at Pod of Interest on Twitter. If you'd like to follow me, I'm at Jedi Brian on all social media sites. If you enjoyed this episode, please share it and tell your friends. Let them know we've got some cool stuff going on over here. Speaking of cool stuff, we now have merch. Just search The Interesting Podcast on tpublic.com to get some sweet gear. Also, I've made a Patreon. So if you'd like to support the show and get access to other exclusive shows, you can now do that at patreon.com slash jedibrian. On that note, special thanks to Chris, Ben, Jim, Daz, Kelly, Daryl, Logan, Victor, and JC. Your support means so, so much, and I cannot tell you how much I appreciate it. So until next time, be well.